Please welcome the engineers. Once again, good evening, hockey fans. Welcome to Rensselaer and Houston Fieldhouse for tonight's ECAC matchup between the Bobcats of Quinnipiac University and your home standing engineers of Rensselaer. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, the visitors from Quinnipiac, starting in the goal, number 34, Michael Garten. At left defense, number six, Devon Tays. At right defense, number eight, Alex Minor Barron. The starting forward line for Quinnipiac at left wing, number seven, Sam Annis. At center, number 26, Travis St. Dennis. And at right wing for Quinnipiac, number 16, Landon Smith. The rest of the Quinnipiac Bobcats and their head coach, Rand Pecknell. Fans, tonight's RPI starting lineup brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts' new dark roast blend featuring a bold start and a smooth finish just like your engineers. Leading your engineers out onto the ice tonight, please welcome the junior engineer, Sean Brennan. Starting in the goal, a senior from Winnipeg, Manitoba, number 33, Jason Castor. At left defense, a senior from Williamsville, New York. Number 24, he's the captain, Chris Bradley. At right defense, a sophomore from Oakville, Ontario. Number 19, Mike Prepovesis. The starting forward for the engineers. At left wing, he's a junior. From Rochester, New York. Number 14, Riley Morbinay. At center for the engineers, a senior from Prior Lake, Minnesota, number seven, Zach Schrader. And at right wing, a sophomore from Edina, Minnesota, number 23, Lou Nanny. The rest of the engineers, their head coach is Seth Dapper. Assistant coaches are Brian Vines and Nolan Graham. Now we direct your attention to center ice for a special ceremony, a puck drop, National Grid Foundation has joined RPI, launching Shoot for the Stars, a program designed to motivate elementary school students by rewarding them with tickets to Rensselaer men's and women's hockey games. Joining us at Center Ice are the student achievers from Troy City School District, along with Mayor of the City of Troy, Patrick Madden, Rensselaer County Executive Kathy Gimeno, VP of Institute and Advancement, Greg Easton, Senior Advancement Officer Deborah Chesky and Director of Community and State Relations Chris Nolan. They're joined by RPI Hockey Captain Chris Bradley and Quinnipiac University Captain Soren Janssen. This program awards students with outstanding achievement in the community and we thank the National Grid Foundation for its support of our youth and our local communities. Let's give them a round of applause for these Outstanding student achievers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise, remove your hats, as the RPI Pep Band will play the national anthems of Canada and the United States of America.
Dr. Clarence Wheeler Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. Just a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org, and you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as WRPI is broadcasting. You provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that's WRPI.org. WRPI Sports seek current RPI students to make live calls for RPI athletic events, such as the one you're about to hear. If you have interest in doing so, we have room this season for RPI baseball. If you would like to express interest, contact us at WRPI-sports at rpi.edu. Uh, just about set for this one. These two teams played to a 2-2 tie in Hamden, Connecticut earlier uh, this year, back in January, a Thursday night, an odd uh, scheduling quirk. They played it. Put a pink on a Thursday and then Princeton on a Thursday on the road. Uh, but here, two games out of the, uh, uh, well, one of the last two uh, at home for RPI here tonight against, uh, again, the number one team in the country, Tom. And RPI is going to have to be uh, an awful lot crisper than they were on their last outing against Dartmouth. They had a pretty good opening 15 minutes to 20 minutes in that game, and then they were really kind of hanging on for dear life for the remainder of the game in overtime. So they, they've got to be a lot better against the best team in the country because this team's only lost two games all year, and there's a reason why. They are pretty much stacked. Goaltending, defense, offense, you name it, they've got it. The top scorer in the conference is Sam Annis. He's on the starting line here for Quinnipiac. They are wearing uh, navy blue or dark blue and Gold. Engineers in their home whites as it's tapped into the zone. Sophomore Landon Smith after it for the Bobcats. Mike Prapavessis, who scored RPI's only goal last time out, flips it out to center. That hit escape, bouncing in the neutral zone. Landon Smith ran into his own man. Prapavessis ties him up, uh, flings it ahead for Schrader. Zach Schrader's shot, hits a body, trickles to the corner. Riley Bourbonnet, the engineers' leading scorer at 21 points on the year. Uh, chases after this one, a hit escape. Caroms to the corner. Devin Tays picks it up there. He's been one of the hottest of these Bobcats. Uh, Ten points in his last five games, three goals, seven assists. As St. Dennis is edged off the puck along the wall, kept in at the point. Far point now, hesitation move, shot coming, deflection, they score! I believe it's St. Dennis who got the deflection, and it's 1 0 Quinnipiac on a deflection. Kasdorf was uh, moving to his left, and the puck went back towards the left side of the net, his right. He wasn't able to react in time. St. Dennis, the first one through the line as he potentially picks up goal number 16 on the year. Well, this top line, as, as Seth Apper mentioned, is, is one of, if not the top line in the entire country with uh, Annis, St. Dennis, and Landon Smith. They can pretty much score at will, and they've done that right here, scoring in the first minute of the game to make it 1 0 Quinnipiac. Back to action here. Puck behind the Quinnipiac goal. Jimmy DeVito throws a hit. Puck comes out to the circle. Now, Brew of uh, Bella, and that one uh, trickles to the corner. DeVito battling for it there with Tim Clifton. And now Clifton to center ice, chips it along, broken up nicely there ahead of Soren Janssen. And it's wrapped back in by the engineers. Back to pick it up is Connor Clifton. As they work behind their goal, it's Clifton on the move. He's being watched by Jesper Orval. A couple players go down at center ice as it uh, looks like Scott Davidson got tangled up with Victor Liljegren. Puck shot all the way down. Was it deflected? Dan Taggart says no. And we'll have a whistle and license call. 18-24 on the clock in this first period. It's 1-0 Quinnipiac. Scoring on Quinnipiac's first goal, even strength goal, at 47 seconds of the first period. Goal is currently being given to Sam Annis. That is his 22nd goal of the season, if that ends up being what it is. The assists are to freshman Chase Prisky and grad student Alex Minor Barron. So a couple of uh, defensemen picking up assists on the goal. Prisky took the shot from the far point. Uh, that assist, regardless of who the goal is, it'll be the 18th assist for freshman Chase Prisky from Pembroke Pines, Florida, having a great freshman year. The shot from the point that hit a couple bodies in front, including Phil Hampton, who was in there for the engineers. Now Hampton will pick up a loose puck, work it up the wall for Jesper Orval. Orval cross ice feed from Mearsmore, had some trouble with it, and now he's being harassed by Tiffenworth. Engineers move it back to Hampton who chips it out to center. On for Miller, he takes a hit at the line. The engineers are offside as Wood touches the puck and then takes a hit. And now he'll have a couple words for the man who put him into the wall. And then they'd be separated, that was Kevin McKickrin. 
McKernan. We've already changed the scoring on the Quinnipiac goal. It is, in fact, being given to Dunn Travis St. Dennis, the 16th goal of the season for the native no, of Trail, British Columbia. One of two natives of Trail in today's lineup for Quinnipiac. Draw coming just outside the QU zone, the number one team in the country. Engineers are 1-0-1 oh, against uh, number one clubs. They beat BC back in October, tied this Quinnipiac team a couple weeks ago in January when they were number one as well. They remain there even through the loss to the Saints last weekend. Back out to center is the puck. It's controlled by Taze. Works it down the middle, intercepted by Rodriguez, who fires it right into Minor Barron. And Gillespie puts some pressure on, but the puck back out to center. Chopped along past Krapovesis, uh, worked into the zone. Bradley tried to knock it out, but it came right back in his face. Now Gillespie shooting in. Gartig out to play. Michael Gartig will shoot it around to the far corner. Taking a look around over there, not being able to clear as it's worked to the near side. Wilson all the way below the goal line to keep it alive down low. Centering pass out in front. Gillespie was wide open, tried to kick it to himself, and just kicked it into the corner. Along the wall now is Bo Peeper. And puck left the zone. We're going to get a whistle. And still early, early on in this one, just one shot. But unfortunately for the engineers, it went in. Out there for the engineers right now is the fourth line of Kenny Gillespie, Travis Fulton, and Alex Rodriguez. And arguably that grouping was the best line for the engineers last weekend. They were factors in the win against Harvard with the game winner. And Travis Fulton assisted on the goal on Saturday. Defensive zone faceoff win. Puck out to center. Shot back in by Jared Wilson and all the way down. This will be another icing call on the engineers, another early infraction on RPI. The rest of the starting lineup for the engineers, Riley Bourbonnet is with Zach Schrader and Lou Nanny. Victor Lilgren is paired off with Milos Bubella and Jimmy DeVito. And Mark Miller centers a line with Jake Wood and Jesper Orval. On defense for RPI, Chris Bradley and Mike Prapavesis. Jared Wilson and Tommy Grant, Mears Moore and Phil Hampton, the same defensive pairings that have been pretty much in place for the last six weeks or so. Face off in the RPI zone, swatted behind the net and helped further by Kasdorf. First one to it, Landon Smith for the Bobcats. Trying to work it down low, it's broken up by Prapavesis. Comes free to the point, however. Clifton shot is blocked by Bourbonnet, and that's something these RPI forwards do very well. Bourbonnet, one of them, along with Wood and Schrader. Uh, they're the top three block shot blockers in ECAC hockey among forwards. In net tonight for Quinnipiac is senior Michael Garteg, the Prince George British Columbia native. Has an overall record this season of 22-2-6 which also happens to be Quinnipiac's overall record. His goals against average is 176 and his save percentage 929. Face off to the left of Jason Kasdorf, who clearly did not have a good look at that puck that deflected right in front of him and into the net uh, to start this game off on the wrong foot for RPI, but they look to rebound. Krapovess is up the wall, chipped out to the center. First one to it will be Prisky. Shoots it right back into RPI territory, rolling wide of the goal. Kasdorf played it anyway, on for the captain from uh, New York, Bradley from Williamsville, outside of Buffalo, shot all the way down the ice, but it was across center, so no icing here. Clifton trying to clear it out. Gets it as far as the boards and now to center. Scott Davidson fires it in. Chipped back out to center off of Davidson's stick, race for the puck. Lilgren trying to jump on it there. Good poke uh, check out to center ice and Davidson back on it for Quinnipiac. Now Janssen tried to play it around Prapavassas, who wasn't having it. And Lilgren will take over at center. Flipped over the head of Derek Smith, the junior from Apple Valley, Minnesota, defenseman who's got 14 points himself. Seems like everybody's got points on this team. Very high-scoring club. It's flipped in on goal from center, played by Kasdorf to the corner. Mears Moore in the air to center ice. Gloved down by Miller. See if they can break in. Orval stopped at the line. Two engineers went in the zone. They'll have to touch up. Moore waiting at the blue line. He'll just ring it in as the engineers were continuing to leave the zone on the late offside. Stick handling through his own zone. Devin Taze, the New York Islanders draft pick, will shoot it in, although he was not across center, and this will be icing. RPI is already looking to have problems moving the puck down ice, so whenever they get an opportunity like this where Quinnipiac has iced the puck, we talked about it an awful lot last weekend where these face-offs in the offensive zone are really kind of of double importance for the engineers. Borbain to take this draw, wins it back cleanly to the point. Tommy Grant a shot and a big blocker stopped by Gartig. Landon Smith, the center, stolen away by Schrader. Played it far side, looking for a Nanny, that one's broken up, right back into the zone, comes Quinnipiac and they're offside as they touch the puck. Annis a little bit ahead of the play. 
really Quinnipiac's defense is doing a great job of just making it difficult for RPI to gain the zone. They're not too worried about what RPI does in the neutral zone with the puck, but they're keeping the engineers from even being able to affect a good dump in in order to go in there and chase it. That's some good defense along their own blue line. Draw outside the RPI zone. Travis Fulton, who picked up an assist against Dartmouth, wins the faceoff, works it to Bradley, who chips it into the Quinnipiac end. Controlled there by Andrew Taverner. Up the boards. Taverner get, uh, takes a hit. Played it on for shot. Uh, they kind of play pinball with it. Fulton had a crack at it. And now falling down along the far side was Tiffenworth. Engineers eventually shoot it into the Quinnipiac zone. Taverner run into by Gillespie. And now carried out by Prisky. He'll shovel it forward. Taverner in on goal from center. Not much for Kasdorf uh, to do with it. He plays it to the corner. Bottom of the circle moving in front. A shot and a save by Kasdorf. Pops out to the point where it's kept in by Ma uh, McMaster. And now a good play at the line by Gillespie to break things up. Rodriguez jumps on a loose puck. He's all by himself in the zone. Tries to take a shot that was blocked to the corner uh, by Minor Barron. Kept in the zone. A big hit was thrown by Rodriguez looking to turn top of the circle. Tried to leave it off for DeVito. Next man is Babella. Babella to the circle. A shot off the back of the net. Babella again swats it to the far side of the zone. He'll jump on it there. The senior from Bosca, Pastrika, Slovakia. Will hand it off for DeVito. DeVito gives it back to him. Wrap around try. Loose to the side of the cage. And the Bobcats are reeling just a bit. Although they'll settle things down with Connor Clifton. Who will try to shoot it off the glass. Knocked down at the line. But then swatted out to center. Good pressure by the engineers there. Here's Mears Moore into the zone. Drop pass Liljegren. Wrist shot coming. Save Darteague. And the rebound pops out to the slot. And now jumping on it is DeVito. He'll spin away from Derek Smith. DeVito to the half wall. Cycles for Moore who pinches up the boards. Mears Moore, the freshman from Duluth, Minnesota. He'll look to work it in even further where it's picked off by Minor Barron. He tries to clear and does. Moore back to his own zone for Tommy Grant. A couple of freshmen working together here at the blue line. Shot all the way down as the icing is waved off. It'll be picked up by Taze. Behind the net for Smith. Bouncing puck, good forecheck pressure by Orval, nearly created a turnover, or make it Miller rather. But the Bobcats do get it to center ice. Tapped into the zone. There's a battle along the wall. Good tie up there on Peeper by Grant, and the engineers have it behind the goal. Jared Wilson down the near side. Wood, did he get a touch? Yes, he did. Puck wraps to the far corner. Orval and Miller there for RPI. Kicking at it was a McKernan. For the Bobcats, Miller has it pinned against the boards, trying to work it out. He goes down, and we play on. Shot off the glass towards center ice, swatted there. Bradley pokes it on. It'll be picked up by Orval. Orval from Holmstad, Sweden. Will chase after it here. Wood throws a hit. It's played around near side for Davidson. At the half wall, Orval helps Schrader just off the bench. Played behind by Alex Minor Barron, grad student from Glendora, California. Played up the far wall and flipped into the zone by the, the captain, Soren Janssen. And then we get a whistle as the puck was played with a high stick. Face off coming out of the zone. Shots are 3-3 early on, but the Bobcats have a 1-0 lead. Some better play by the engineers right there. They had arguably their best opportunity to score with a shot by Milos Rubella, who was looking for the short side. I don't know if Garty thought that that was going wide and was right, or if he was just out of position, because if the puck had just been to the left a little bit that could have found the back of the net instead of hit the side of the net. Shot all the way down by the engineers. First one two it will be Prisky. Chase Prisky on the stick handle through his own zones. Makes a move around Borbin and then plays it up the boards. Landon Smith into the middle trying to find shut. That one's cut off as it's played behind the cage by Bradley. Off the glass to center. Chipped into the zone. They wave off the icing as the puck goes rolling into the near corner of the Bobcats end. Schrader putting the pressure on Connor Clifton. Puck is tied up there, trying to wedge it out of there is Bourbonnet. So is Schrader. Bourbonnet picks it away. Bourbonnet thought about playing it back to the point, and it's intercepted. Landon Smith on the move. Three on two if they hurry. Far side, Annis into the zone. Drop pass there. Prisky walking in. He'll wrap around the net, looking for a pass. It was poked away for a second by Fulton. Then he throws a hit into the freshman D-man. Centering pass out in front to the slot. Turning and shooting. A save by Kamsdorf. Rebound loose in front. Still loose, and they score. It's a goal, I believe it's McKernan. 
Well, it's 2 0 Quinnipiac on a rebound goal in front of Kasdorf. It's interesting to watch Quinnipiac work in the attacking zone because they have so much fluidity that there seems like there's always going to be a Bobcat player where the puck is going to end up. And, and for RPI's defense, that makes it things really difficult if they don't get the clearance in the first try. In that case right there, Tommy Grant tried to take a, sh to, a shot to, to clear the puck out from in front of the zone and wasn't able to get it on the first try. And there was McKeeran right there to just basically pounce on it and put it to the back of the net for his second goal of the season and make it two to nothing Quinnipiac. Engineers have dug a bit of a hole here as we're halfway through the first period. Played by Smith at center ice. Now McKernan tried to jump on it, skipped by him. Controlled by Craig Martin, did not play against RPI last time. Martin a freshman out of Trail, British Columbia. Big hit at center ice. Fans react there, and the engineers take over. It's Travis Fulton moving in far side to the slot. He takes a hit. Rodriguez a shot. That one's blocked away. McKernan on his uh, backside trying to clear. Now we get a whistle, and I believe maybe a penalty here coming up on Quinnipiac. Maybe. Or the net's off. The original call was at the, the net came off. Net was knocked off by so the no, leg no of, of okay. Garty. So the faceoff will be in the Quinnipiac zone, and the Bobcats won't be able to change. So really, maybe an yeah, extra, the arm went up for that extra yeah. opportunity here for RPI if they can win this faceoff. Referee's arm went up. I jumped the gun. It was just letting Quinnipiac know they were not going to be allowed to change. I beg your pardon. There, played by Number Smith seven, down the middle. It'll be carried on further by Peeper. He takes a hit from Grant and gets a D. Mike Kravavess is back to pick it up. The sophomore from Oakville, Ontario. Three goals, 11 assists on the season for the former Toronto Patriot of the OJHL. Babella, far side feed, too far out in front of Kravavess. Now he takes a hit from Davidson. Davidson goes down. It's played there and a shot right on by Tim Clifton is held onto by Jason Kasdorf. Clifton with the 14 goals and 16 assists. He leads the team uh, scoring on 21% of his shots. So keeping him out was something Kasdorf uh, really did there. Scoring on Quinnipiac's second goal, an even strength goal at 9-12 of the first period. Goal scored by Kevin McKernan with the assists to Sam Annis and Landon Smith. Engineers win the defensive zone faceoff. It's flipped into the air by Wood. Skipping into Quinnipiac territory will be tracked down by Taze. Devin Taze out of Abbotsford, B.C. Works it behind his own goal to set up the breakout. Taze. Off for Minor Barron. Back to Taze. He'll cross center, flip it into the zone. Off the stick of uh, Teffenworth. And now behind the goal. Taverner. Taverner to the point. Flips it off the board. It's good to... Cycle play along the wall there by the Bobcats. Centering pass broken up nicely by the Engineers. They'll spin it out to center. Too far for the intended target. Right back into the Engineers zone. And Miller will jump on it there. Senior out of Messina, New York. Plays it near side for Jared Wilson. A hit thrown by Wood. Puck into the zone. Orval is going to find it. He's all alone one on four waiting for his teammates to change. Nice job by him to hold up play. Although he gives it away. Trying to hand it off for Bradley. Connor Clifton far side. Some speed into the zone. As Taverner has it, it's broken up there, but kept in by Prisky. He lost the handle. Taverner gives it back to him. Shot coming and a save by Kasdorf through a big time screen. That was uh, placed by Tiffenworth. Engineers take over. Babella tried to drag it into the zone. Poked off his stick and back out to center. Bradley has it there. On for DeVito to the circle. A shot and a save by Gartig. Funny hop off the dasher, played to the corner. DeVito lost a handle on the puck. Prapovess's pinches, but can't keep it alive. It's played out to center. Liljegren, near side for Bradley. He'll play it on for DeVito. Jimmy DeVito driving in to the corner. Takes a bump there from Derek Smith. And he'll spin back towards the half wall. Centering pass off the stick of Fulton, who was waiting at the top of the circle, but could not handle the hot feed. Here's Bradley now in his own zone. Gives it back to Prapovesis. Eight minutes to go in the first period. 2-0 Quinnipiac leading. It's number one versus number 17 and a giveaway at the line. St. Dennis trying to jump on it. Gillespie does a nice job helping out. And now it's two on two the other way. Gale uh, excuse me, Fulton trying to walk in with it. Now Rodriguez, a backhand try over the top of the net. Caroms off the glass to the corner. Gillespie trying to work it down low. It's picked off by Smith. And now a good poke check by Rodriguez. Has a man in front. 
Fulton jumps on it. Shot saved by Gartig, and he covers. That's good stick to by this uh, fourth line for RPI. Rodriguez, Fulton, hey, and Gillespie turn in a solid chance down. here, but Gartig keeps them out. Well, the good news if you're an RPI fan is that there's plenty of time left in this game. I mean, there's still 7.37 left in the first period. We've still got two more periods to go after this one, so down 2 nothing is not impossible. But the, the bad news is that you don't see Quinnipiac giving up three goals in a game very frequently. So in order to get the victory tonight, RPI is going to have to really dig down deep, really get themselves committed on both offense and defense. And it's not that they've been doing a bad job of that. They just haven't been up to, the, to what they need to be in order to beat a number one team. Davidson trying to fly out of the zone. They nearly find him, but Tommy Grant just runs him into the wall. Towards the point, cannot keep it alive. Well, they can. Good play by Minor Barrett. Engineers trying to poke it out. And now loose in the slot, controlled by RPI. It's Orval on for Wood. Jake Wood having a, a career year in his senior season with the eight goals and seven assists for 15 points. Here's Wilson carrying in. That'll nifty move to get wide. He'll flip it in deep before taking a hit. But the Quinnipiac man went down. That was Davidson who tried to put a charge into Wilson. They tangle behind the goal. Played by Minor Barron. Shot through the legs and too far out in front of Craig Martin. Engineers working up the far side boards. Tipped into the zone by Orval. 6.43 left in the first. 2 nothing. Bobcats leading here. Long stretch pass. Doesn't hit anybody. This will be icing on the Bobcats. A little bit of risky play there, but uh, we'll draw it up in the QU end with 6.35 left in the first period. Keeping an eye on women's hockey, which is in their final weekend of the regular season. The engineers are at Princeton this evening. They've fallen behind 1-0 at 17.04 of the first period. Goal by Fiona McKenna has the Tigers up 1-0 over RPI. Face-off coming up. Won cleanly by the Bobcats, although a good... Uh, Hustle by Liljegren nearly stole the puck away behind the goal. They duel in the near corner. Liljegren goes in awkwardly on Taze, but does separate the puck from him. Played around to the far side corner. Schrader trying to get there. He's met in the corner by Peeper. Puck comes free to the circle. Now Quinnipiac looks to break out. Minor Baron leading the charge. Plays it up the boards. Will this be icing on Quinnipiac? Yes, it will. Another infraction here on the visitors. We'll send the faceoff back to the RPI zone. and. Bobcats were trying to get a change there. They will not be allowed, of course. I mentioned that it's not easy to get three goals on the Bobcats, but notably they have given up three or more goals in three of their last five games. So maybe not quite as crisp defensively recently as they have been for much of the season. Scooped out to center and all the way down. Will this be icing? Looks like it will be. As Prabavasis skates about 75% after it, but did enough. Another icing on Quinnipiac, and they'll have to sort out who's supposed to be on the ice once again. Although it won't be too difficult. It was just the, gr the group that they just had to usher back onto the ice. Matter of fact, uh, Quinnipiac has given up three or more goals six times in calendar year 2016, and they've been, gone to overtime seven times in uh, the same calendar year. So it's a uh, little of uh, razor's edge for, for Quinnipiac lately. To center. Right between the RPI defenseman who tried to close in and keep it in, couldn't do it. Partial change for the Bobcats as the engineers shoot it right back in. Connor Clifton with some pressure there from Babella. Worked around to the far wall. Gloved down by Bradley. Nice job to keep it in the zone. Tried to kick it to himself. That was uh, Fulton not going to work. Back come the Bobcats the other way. Good play by Bradley once again at the wall. But they keep the puck in the zone. Stick handling there. Shut into the corner. Taverner has some room Taver uh, to the point there for Clifton. A shot. That takes another wicked deflection. This time it goes wide to the near side boards now. Tiffenworth now to the point for Clifton. Behind the cage, it's shut. He hands it off for Tiffenworth, who gives it back. Tiffenworth to the point. Shot. And that snapped in half the stick of Connor Clifton. The engineers skate back the other way. Three on two and a half. Fulton into the zone. One of the engineers peels off. Fulton gets tripped. Puck to the side of the cage. Jam try by Gillespie. And we will have our first penalty of the game now. Good drive there. And once again, it's the fourth line drawing the penalty. Fulton looks to be a bit shaken up as he's getting help back to his feet. But he drew the penalty on the Bobcats. Yeah, this is going to go against Clifton, who's the one who snapped his, his twig on that shot. And really, it was one of the most blatant penalties that you'll see because 
all he really did was kind of lean into Fulton almost with his knee. I mean, it was it was quite flagrant. I mean, if it was if, if we're talking NBA style, it, that would be considered an intentional foul for sure. It was basically because he didn't have his stick. He didn't really need to do it either because he had a good angle on him anyway. Just just being there was enough to probably to keep Fulton from getting quality opportunity. But we're going to see the engineers' power play go to work now. Power play time for RPI. The engineers this season, 12.6%. The Bobcats on the kill are a solid 90.3%, 102 of 113 killed off. They do take a lot of penalties. Coach Appert mentioned it in the pregame. Uh, but they have a great penalty kill, so it doesn't hurt you, I guess. Played out towards the point, but he split the D. That was Orval just trying to whack it there. Didn't look around. Back behind the cage, they'll restart things. Jared Wilson for the engineers. Four goals, four assists for the sophomore, who seems to score timely goals for this team. Played around to the far corner. Clearing effort, skips by Wilson, you never saw it. And behind the goal, Kasdorf will knock it down. Halfway through the power play for RPI. And we have 3.45 left in the period. Hampton down the middle. On for Gillespie, that puck knocked him down. And that'll allow the Bobcats to clear it once again. Looking to establish a possession in the offensive end. It'll be Hampton who takes the puck this time. Down the middle of the ice, fed on for, uh, further for Hampton. And uh, clear, cleared again by the Bobcats. See, that was Fulton who got knocked down in the zone. 25 seconds left on the power play. Prapavesis now. He'll skate it down the middle of the ice once more. Left near side for Wood, he'll ring it in. Wraps around to the far corner. 14 seconds to go on the power play. Smith looking to clear, broken up at the wall. Played back to the point, maybe a chance here. Prapavesa, center blue line, holding. To the far circle, now Wood. Near side for Bradley, nearly lost it out of the zone. He keeps it in. Prapavesa now. Penalty about to expire, now it's over. Back to five aside, the engineer still on the attack. Off the foot and in. It went in off of DeVito's skate, but he didn't know anything of it. It's going to stand, I bet. It's 2-1. to one. They yeah, will review it, I'm sure. I'm, I'm positive they're going to take a look at this one because it, it absolutely went in off the skate, but he was more or less just standing there. I don't even I don't even know if he realized at first that the puck was coming to him because he was looking through. He was, he was looking through Connor uh, Clifton. Just ends up going off his skate and in. Kind of a... One I don't think Gartig was expecting, but he certainly went directly to the official right away and pointed. After looking at the overhead, DeVito is, is kind of turning as it's coming down, but not enough to be a distinct kicking motion, so the goal will count. The engineers have cut Quinnipiac's lead in half. It's two, uh, two to one. All right, so they won't review it. <laughs> I thought for sure. With all the reviews we've seen throughout the year, they were going to look at that again. But uh, I guess they saw it plenty well enough. Engineers got a goal off of Mark Miller's arm the last time these two teams played. Now they get one off the foot of DeVito for Jimmy DeVito. It is his second of the season, and it pulls the engineers within 2-1. to one. That's just the break the engineers needed. It won't be a power play goal, but it stemmed from the engineers entering the zone on the power play. Huge hit by Wilson on Landon Smith as he knocked him over. Now another dump in. Rodriguez plays it around to the near corner. The engineers are certainly being physical in this game. Something they need to do against this highly skilled Quinnipiac club. St. Dennis behind, stolen away by Babella. Babella throwing it in front, trying to find Miller. And good play by Babella to keep it alive. Miller at the circle, waits for help. Fed across for Bradley, he'll keep it in the zone. Nearly gave it away to Janssen, or make it Smith rather. Shot back in. RPI will get a change. It was Prapavesis ringing the puck off of DeVito's skate. Or Wood, rather. Jake Wood took the shot off of DeVito's skate. Now we have an icing call against the Bobcats. So a big time goal, Tom, uh, with uh, so little time left in the period. Minute and a half now. Uh, left in the first, but engineers really needed something positive going into the break here. Sometimes you just got to get some, some good breaks, and good things happen when you shoot the puck. That's what basically how Quinnipiac has scored the two goals that they've got. They just they basically just shot the puck, and 
got the right bounce and got goals. Right there, Jake Wood takes a shot. Wasn't a real high quality shot, but didn't need to be. He just Garty got a piece of it and ended up bouncing to Jimmy DeVito, who didn't even need to see it in order to put it in. Face off here in the Quinnipiac zone. Prisky on the far side of his goal, plays it on. Shot off the skate of Wilson, but it's jumped on there by Taze. To center, good physical play by Prapavesis. We have a puck play with a high stick, I think, yes. That will draw another whistle. Minute 20 on the clock here in the first. Quinnipiac now leading just 2-1. to one. Scoring on RPI's first goal this evening, a even strength goal at 17-17 uh, of the first period. Jimmy DeVito, his second goal of the year, with the assists going to Jake Wood and Mike Prapavesis. So we'll draw this uh, up, I believe, at neutral ice here. Well, they're deciding it where it's supposed to be. And here we go. Out of their own zone now. Minor Barron shoots it in. The deflection, they'll say no icing. Picked up by Bradley. At the half wall, now to the point. Minor Barron scoops it in front. Prabhavesis has some trouble with it. Poked to the side wall. Nicely by Bradley. That's now Fulton to center. Play played on further by Lilligren. One minute play. left in the first. Taze back to pick it up for Quinnipiac. Some pressure coming from Lilligren. As Minor Barron now takes a whack from Lilligren. Moore throws a hit at center ice. Puck trickling into RPI territory. Hampton around. DeVito chops it to center. Controlled there by Smith. Shot back in by the Bobcats, stolen away quickly by the Engineers. Maybe they can hurry in, trying to catch the Bobcats on a chain. Schrader across ice feed, sticked away by Garting to the corner. Taverner up ahead. Who wants the puck? It's carried on further by McKernan. Now it trickles in on Kasdorf, who will cover, and McKernan is surrounded. 24.8 on the clock in the first. Two to one, Bobcats. That was a great Our clearance by Garting into the corner. Ed DeVito crashing on the left side. When you get that initial stop when the other team is basically moving down on the break, you have to essentially muscle that out of harm's way yourself, and Gartig did a pretty good job of moving that puck to where DeVito wasn't going to be able to pick it up. Draw here to the left of Kasdorf. Not a lot of shots in this one, not nearly as many as Kazi has seen. In the last weekend and the last time they played this Quinnipiac club is a shot from the point. Loose in the circle. McKernan battling for it. Now walking right in. Across ice speed too far in front of Taverner. Or he would have had a sure goal. And now a bouncing puck at center. Wood runs over shut. Loose to center. And Grant, another hit thrown by DeVito this time. Shot in. Gartig will play with five seconds to go in the period. Teffenworth along the near wall. He takes a hit from DeVito. And this uh, engineer surely winning the physical battle in this game. They trail two to one after one. But they may have gotten under the skin of these Bobcats just a bit here towards the end of this period. Some hits that uh, got, some, got some looks back from the uh, Quinnipiac players. You have to give RPI a lot of credit for not backing down on this one. They had a rough start to this game. They were down two goals early. And just 9-12 into the game, they were down 2 nothing. But they picked up the offensive uh, pressure a little bit. They got a, kind of a lucky goal. But they really got the job done late in the period by maintaining a little bit better possession. And like you said, Terry, playing that physical game, Jared Wilson and, and Jimmy DeVito especially, Jake Wood too. I mean, these are three guys that you expect to play a physical game. They really have brought it tonight. They are willing to throw the body around. And when you have a solid penalty kill like both of these teams do, it lends itself to playing physical hockey. Quinnipiac is certainly not afraid to play physical hockey. Connor Clifton was not worried about taking that penalty right there because he knew, knows that he's got a team that's going to kill off the penalty nine times out of ten. And they did right there. Just the engineers were able to take advantage of the fact that they had the power play heading into the shot on goal that created the goal. And yeah, one of those one of those goals is kind of created by the fact that you were on the power play. So absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I expect a lot more physical play to, uh, as, as the game continues because the, the Bobcats are uh, certainly not a team to, to back down from that at all. Absolutely not. We will step aside. I had a chance to sit down earlier today with uh, the RPI ACHA 
president, Teo Camadilla. Uh, he's a senior on the team. They're currently down in New Jersey. They're playing in their uh, conference tournament, which is not uh, to say they have also have a regional tournament next weekend, but we'll talk about that in our interview. So stay tuned for that in our first intermission. Once again, your score after one period of play is the number one Bobcats two and the 17th ranked Engineers one. You're listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Christopher Hoskins, Rob Lozon, Christopher Markham, Matthew Pagel, Elise Romberger, Brittany Rupp, Corey Sago, Morgan Schweitzer, Sarah Straw, Nicholas Thompson, Michael Whitworth, Alexander Yin, and honorary Phalanx member, Dr. Eric Ledet. Now those, the following people couldn't be reckoned, couldn't make it this evening, but we'd like to recognize them anyway. Michael Kaola, Elise Espinal, Emily Lorillard, Alexandra Wells, honorary Phalanx members, Elizabeth Herkenham, and Thomas Cooley. Your 2016 inductees in Phalanx. Let's have a nice round of applause for all of them. Thank you. Hey, now we direct your attention to the west end of the field house. Time for the Seth Q Money Machine Money Grab. Our contestant tonight, please welcome Ward DeLong. Ward will have 60 seconds to grab as much money as he can while it's flying around inside the Seth Q Money Machine. Best part, he gets to keep whatever he can hold on to. You ready? 60 seconds on the clock. As soon as he's in, we'll go. Remember, for all your banking, insurance, and investment needs, visit SEPQ on Hoosick Street in Troy or on campus at the Rensselaer Union. That's 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds left. That's it. Let's have a nice round of applause for Ward DeLong. And the Seth Q Money Machine money grab tonight. Whatever he gets, he gets to keep. Seth Q will match that amount and donate it to charity. Hey fans, Ryan's Wake, proud to support RPI Athletics. After the game, head downtown, check out the pub kitchen at Ryan's Wake. We have a lost phone here down near the penalty boxes. If you've lost a phone, identify it and we'll give it to you. It was found near section 15.
RPI Men's Hockey would like to thank the following sponsors, GE, Moe's, SEPQ, CDPHP, The Rock, Boucher and Clark Financial Group, Jackie Montgomery Scott, Price Chopper, AFSCO Fence, Yankee Trails, Red Front Pizza, Tri-City Reynolds, Dunkin' Donuts, Toyota, Ben and Jerry's, Warren W. Fane, Auto Task, at Tri-City Valley Cats, all proud sponsors of RPI Hockey.
fiercely independent and highly dedicated to earning the trust and confidence of our clients every day. I welcome the opportunity to show you how we can protect and enhance your wealth today. Please call me for a free consultation. And let's go red! RPI and Quinnipiac score after one period of play is Quinnipiac 2 and RPI 1. My name is Tom Real. I'm joined by Perilous Garris, and you're listening to this on your home for Engineers Hockey, 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. So we're getting started with the second period. I'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. As a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser at WRPI.org. And you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as WRPI is broadcasting. You can buy that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, WRPI.org. Quick update from the women's game. Shania Tomlinson has tied things up for the engineers. They are playing midway through the second period. Second period here in Troy. Engineers skating from left to right. They shoot it in from center ice off the center ice uh, faceoff win. Bradley into the glove of Garty, who leaves it at the side of the net for Taze. St. Dennis will flip into the RPI zone, knocked out of the air by Bradley. And his clearing effort is knocked down by St. Dennis. Travis St. Dennis picked up his 16th goal of the year to start things off in the first minute of this game. RPI has pulled back to within 2-1 to one, uh, after Kevin McKernan scored his second of the year for the Bobcats to make it 2-0 at the time. Fired into the RPI zone. It'll wrap around to the half wall and is tied up by Wilson. Bourbonnet lost it in his skates. He gets hit hard by Tim Clifton. High in the air. Will stay on the ice off the top of the glass and into the netting. And out of sight. We lost that one. We'll have a faceoff coming up, I believe, in the neutral zone, early still in the second period. Running down scores from the ECAC all after one period of play. Dart with a 3 0 lead on Colgate. St. Lawrence and Yale tied at 1. Union is up on Princeton 1 0. Harvard has a 1 0 lead on Cornell. And in the shocker so far this evening, Brown leads Clarkson 4 0. What? Yeah. Faceoff win by the Bobcats all the way back past Prisky. He'll have to chase it down in his own zone. He gets hit by DeVito. Played by Connor Clifton, the Phoenix Coyotes, or now I guess Arizona Coyotes draft pick. As RPI will shoot it back in, DeVito has to touch up, so does Babello. They're both offside. Now they touch the puck, and that is illegal. 105 into the second. It's 2 to 1 Quinnipiac. And scoring for the women, uh, 6 15 in the second period. Shannon Tomlinson scoring from Alexa Crucial and Jen Godin. Makes it 1 1 on the power play. Another score that the engineer women are taking a look at. Cornell has a 1 0 lead over Dartmouth. Should Cornell lose that game, RPI would clinch the playoff spot. Thanks, Tom. Back to action here. The engineers dump it in off the center ice draw. Prisky, a little bit of a poke check from Lil Jagrin, worked around to the far side for Connor Clifton. Up the boards, kept in by DeVito. Good pressure by RPI, but the Bobcats are going to be able to escape. It's Prisky down the middle, fires it in over the top of Kasdorf, hops to the side of the net. Who are we going to whistle here? And I'm not sure what for. Still early on in the second, just a minute and a half into the second period. Engineers continuing to exert themselves physically and uh, trending in the right way, I guess you could say. It's a great sign for RPI. They, they, like I said at the end of the period, they could have backed down. They really haven't. They've kind of turned up the intensity 
considerably. And so far here in the second period, they're showing that this is still anyone's game. Here is Phil Hampton, the senior from Oakville, Ontario. Works it off for Mears Moore, on for Gillespie. That'll hop into the bench. Look out, Nolan Graham. He was the, some help uh, from the man in front of him. That was Schrader. Uh, kept it from hitting him. Former RPI engineer, 03 grad. Plenty of opportunities here early in the second period for the engineers to work on their on their uh, face-off abilities. And they Bob. were 8-14 uh, and 14 in the first period, so it's still not, a little bit of work to do. Not terrible. The Bobcats, one of the better teams in the country on the draw. RPI still hovering on that 45% mark. Here's Hampton into the zone for Rodriguez. Pulls it back, top of the circle. Fresh shot coming. It deflected off a of Bobcat. Gillespie on the wraparound. Out in front. They score! started about uh, how good this line was last weekend and they do it once again they've created a goal all three forwards really chipping in on this play but Kenny Gillespie eventually putting it on the stick of Alex Rodriguez and the freshman has tied this game up here early in the second period it's a brand new game 2-2 Prabovas is on for Bradley this is exactly what the engineers needed to get this Large crowd going. They couldn't give me the attendance earlier. I asked for it. They said we have uh, still still selling tickets, 3,400. There's a play in front of the RPI goal. Still loose in front. Kicked away by Kasdorf to the side of the cage. Penalty coming up here. I believe it's going to go on the engineers. Thought they got a touch. Now we get a whistle. Rodriguez picks up the goal. There's going to be the engineers going on the power play here. Just a, just a reckless hit by Quinnipiac. I missed it. In the attacking zone. Really no need for it whatsoever. You want to play physical, but you don't, you, you can't be putting your, your player down on the on the ice the way that I think that was St. Dennis. I thought it was Smith at first, but they're going to get they're going to get St. Dennis for this hit. It was an open ice hit. Not sure exactly what they're calling. In the offensive zone, you definitely don't want to take a penalty there. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to play with an edge, but you really can't be just completely obliterating your obliterating your, your guy in the attacking zone the way that he did. I, I would probably call this roughing. It was really kind of uncalled for. Okay. Um, but I, I still haven't seen exactly what the call is. So Good I'll, interference. We'll see. Inter Late. Yeah, interference, roughing. It was away from the puck. We know that. The engineers going back to the power play. They're 0 for 1 so far tonight. 0 for 1 with an asterisk. As the engineers, a good thing started here. Moore down low, kicked at by Borbonet. Along the near side wall, he duels there with uh, Connor Clifton. And Prabovesis just can't keep it in. Good clearing play. Losing his stick. Did he break it? McKernan playing with that one. As it's skated in by Prabovesis. Left to the far wall for Borbonet. Steps through a check played by Babella along the boards. Hands it off for Borbonet. Borbonet in front. Driving the net. Save made. Rebound. Garti made the save again. To the corner now. Bobcats desperately trying to clear, and they do to center ice. Tremendous pressure there, and a late hit away from the play as Orval was decked about 40 feet from the puck. Babella will give it to McKernan, and then McKernan dumps Orval again, and now Orval is mixing it up with Tim Clifton, and the engineers better settle down their freshman as they are jumping and jiving in the Quinnipiac zone. Well, McKernan is going to get the original call. He might yeah. get it again, too, because he went after Orval pretty mightily, and this is starting to spire a lot of control, and Quinnipiac really needs to settle themselves down because they're putting themselves behind the eight ball for sure. They're going to go down a guy here. They might get lucky, and Farpiac draws a, a retaliatory penalty as well. But all things being equal, they, they did just put themselves down two men initially, at least. And McKernan, this still may end up being a two-man advantage for the engineers if McKernan gets busted for hitting Orval two different times. He's, it, he's, he's skated off to the penalty box right now, but the engineers might be in a position where they're going to have a minute 17 of, of, of uh, five on three here. We'll see how, when, how they uh, sort this out. Orval, it was going to be five on three before Orval decided to retaliate a bit there. We'll see, I guess, uh, there's two Bobcats in the box. The RPI box is open. I don't know yeah. if there's anyone in it because of the, can't see. the crowds that, that's standing in front of it. But. Although RPI TV did put some cameras in both press boxes, this would be the time for them to help us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, it does look like it's going to be a five on three. Yeah, well, 
The, St. Dennis clearly the, still in the box. Right. The question really to me is Orval's in there. The question to me there is, is, is whether they're going to get is whether they're going to get uh, McKiernan for for obviously the first hit which caused the whole thing, and then right. he could get a second penalty for going after Orval again once Orval went after him. They, that was a serious dust up, and he ended up putting Orval down on the ice after Orval retaliated. So so Jesper Orval is off for the engineers. Yep. The, the, the real question now is, is whether there's going to be multiple penalties doled out to Quinnipiac on this play. Talked about at the end of the first period, RPI was getting very physical, and they were taking it to the Bobcats. It's kind of bubbled over. We're still early on in this in this period, the second period. We're, we're uh, a little over three minutes into the, the frame, and not happy slamming the door. This Bobcats team pretty clearly rattled. There are now three Quinnipiac players, one of them probably serving an extra penalty that you mentioned. That would be my guess. Uh, St. Dennis is in there. Uh, Clifton is also in there. And then I believe McKiernan is the other one that, that should be in there, or, McK or, or McKiernan should be in there for, for certain. They're putting a penalty up on the board for Connor Clifton. Uh, I don't think he was the initial guy. He might, he might be the one serving a penalty. We'll have to see how all of this shakes out. By the way, I want to mention that it was a roughing call against okay. uh, St. Dennis initially that, that, that started the whole the whole nine yards here. So it's going to be a it looks like a five on four still. But I don't know. It's, it's entirely possible. It's, it's, I see five five engineers out there. I see four Bobcats right now that, that might lend one to, to wonder if one of the Quinnipiac penalties was actually a 10 minute misconduct. They're talking it out. Yeah, you might be right there. Now. Janssen's coming over to ask some more questions. He's the captain for the Bobcats, so this is his job uh, wearing that C. This has it, 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 it appeared as though the engineers were going to get a five on three out of it before Jesper Orval and uh, McKernan went to an, a little extra afterwards. Now they've taken the. Yeah, I think it's going to be five on three. They've taken the, the Orval penalty off the board. Probably matching. And it is going to be five on three for the engineers for the next minute 17. So really a big opportunity now for the engineers who have just tied it at two before this whole thing started. Now a real big opportunity for them to take the lead. Big spot in this game. The engineers have pulled back to within, or to even, excuse me, 2-2. Two, two, and now they have a five on three power play. Prapovesis on for Wilson. Down low, gives it back. Jared Wilson on it. Over to Prapovesis. To the near corner, Bourbonnet. Behind to the far corner, DeVito. Up top, Wilson. A shot saved by Garti. Bobella gets whacked in front by Prisky. And tensions are certainly Pen high. Bobella was going uh, for a rebound that wasn't there, and he got popped. Just a reminder, you're listening to live coverage of Engineers Hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Tom Reel and Perilous Garris with you on the call, trying to make heads or tails of all the penalties that have come down. Jesper Orval is taking a two-minute penalty for roughing. Clifton has a two-minute penalty for roughing. And still waiting for the remainder of it now. That can't be right. Prapovesis for RPI. Still 52 seconds, a five on three. Drop pass in front. Near side, Wilson gives it back to Vito. A drive high off the glass. Rebound pops to the circle. Loose in front, a chance to clear. They can't do it. Wilson, near side for Bourbonnet. Bourbonnet carries center blue line. Shot coming. Heads blocked. Rebound the Bella. No. Wilson now. Touch pass near side. Prapovesis in front. Here's Bourbonnet. Centering pass knocked away. Right back to Prapovesis. He'll hold it there and spin back to the point. 26 to go. A five on three. Wilson holding to the slot. Down low. He finds DeVito. DeVito pulls it back out. DeVito to the blue line. Kind of the half decided not to pass that one the last second. The engineers keep it in the zone. Prapovesis now. High slot. Near side Wilson. A drive off the post. Rebound. Swept wide. Bourbonnet off his skate. Looking to pick up the puck. Great play by Babella to keep it alive. Can he keep it in the zone? Yes, he can. To the far side, they keep it alive. Prapovesis in. Drop pass Babella. Wrist shot coming. Save Garting. How did he keep it out? Big time save. He, Holy cow! He left almost out of his pass to get that. And then St. Dennis coming right out of the box just plows into Bubella. That's a terrible move on his part. He just got out of the penalty box. Bubella might get one here because he took a whack at Gartig's head. Taze and St. Dennis both took exception. 
you have to imagine they're going to both going to go off here. I, I, was, I was saying that can't be right because they had a penalty up for, for Bubella on the, right before all of this, okay. right before that last sequence. They had a penalty up for Bubella, who was very clearly still on the ice. So, yeah. by yes. definition, couldn't have possibly taken a penalty. It is going to be Bubella's going this, off, this but, is the right but, but, the, but the penalty box is also open for Quinnipiac now. So St. Dennis has to be going as well. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, that St. Dennis's reprieve from the penalty box was short-lived, to say the least. He came right out of the box, skated right back into the play. If, if the engineers had been able to score on that last bit of sequence, it would have been because there were still three guys out there. St. Dennis was rushing back, and his first thing when he got there was right after the whistle, just cream Bubella, which, as you mentioned, Barry, was, was partially because he was taking some wax at the puck when when uh, Gartik was there and Gartik yeah. practically jumped out of it. Spectacular. It was just a great save. I mean, it, it, it's it's for that that this is not a 3-2 game right now. The engineers just seconds earlier ringing one off the post on a big shot by Jared Wilson, unable to cast one of the best netminders in the country in Michael Gartik. And now it seems that the uh, the, the Bobcats may be the worst for wear here. They, they've taken the, the penalty to Bubella off the board. They're going to be so, matching again. So, so unless they're unless unless Quinnipiac's taking two penalties here, it, it should it should be matching, and then we should still be seeing five on four. But they had the Bubella penalty up on the on the on the clock, and they've taken it down since, and now they're taking down the other Quinnipiac one. So, my my best guess is that we're going to see either five on four here or four on three. There are four engineers right. skating around out there right now. So it's going to be a one-man RPI advantage for 34 seconds. I believe the four on three makes sense because they both come out uh, following yeah. the two minutes there. Let's, let me see if I can if I can run all of this down. Three. Travis St. Dennis took a, a roughing penalty at 222. Yep. Then at 305 there were three penalties called Connor Clifton and Tim Clifton for Quinnipiac both called for 305 and Jesper Orval called for roughing at 305. So. St. Dennis Mark is now going off for cross-checking. Tommy Schutt is going off for cross-checking. And then a slashing call against Rubella. Rubella. That's right. So should there be, yeah, five on three, yes. And here's back to five on three. Five on four. There's four. four by yeah, four. 30 seconds of five on four. Glad we sorted that out. Puck out to center and a clearing effort. All the way down by Quinnipiac. Extra penalty on DeVito. That's what we missed. Okay. So there was a bit of a skirmish after the play, but Bella deserved one. He caught Gartig in the head with a stick when he was down after making the save. So there are 10 seconds left of power play time for RPI that nearly put one home a couple of times. Jared Wilson rang one off the post, the most uh, glaring of the opportunities for RPI. Out of the box, and now they're going to call icing. No, they're call holding here on who must be an engineer. As uh, we've gone from Almost no penalties being called throughout the month of January into the February, and now we've had a, a penalty festival of sorts. Yeah, this is, there's been more penalties here in the first five plus minutes of the second period than we've seen probably in the last month or so, <laughs> to be quite fair. Unreal. But it's Schrader going off for holding. So the engineers, penalty kill going to work for the first time tonight. They are 84.5%. Quinnipiac has one of the best power plays in the country at 28.2%. So a dangerous spot now for RPI. So the engineers looking to kill one off here. They'll need Chasdorf to be good. Prisky carries far point. Watched there by Miller. Nearly gave it away to him. Tapped back to the point by a Taverner. Smith near side. One-timer. Ennis. And that one clanged off the glass. Chopping at it. Miller can't clear the zone. Ennis near side. Shot over the top. That puck didn't sit for him. Prisky near side. Taverner nearly gave it away. Poked out the center. Miller trying to jump on it. Miller short-handed to the slot. Still Miller turning and he didn't get much on it. He was bumped by Prisky, but he wastes some solid minutes here. A shot by Wilson short-handed. Big time save by Gartig. He came a foot out of the crease to make the stop. Bourbonnet. Continuing the puck down low, stolen away by Prisky, but the engineers with a couple of short-handed chances here. One ten to go on the power play for Quinnipiac as they look to break out of their own zone. Derek Smith down the middle, McMaster into the zone, far side, a whistle, they're offside, and now Ennis gets the show from Bourbonnet, and he looks Paul agitated Paul as well. And Michael Gartig is just pretty much proving why he's one of the best goaltenders in the country and a very deserving candidate for the Hobie Baker Award. I mean, he's just come up with two or really three huge saves in just the last couple of minutes of gameplay. One on the power play for RPI, one one in series of shorthanded. He didn't have a lot to do in the first period, but he's been very busy here in the second. 
Minute to go on the Quinnipiac power play. More pushing and shoving before the faceoff. It was Wilson on the far side, I believe, with Janssen. And we're going to see more, I'm sure, in that department as this game goes along. Still a long way to go. Moving into the zone, and Smith, the shot goes just wide. He walked right in off the center ice faceoff. I got a shot away. Poked to the far wall. Tapped by Clifton. Great stick by Bourbonnet. He broke up the play and cleared it out. All in one motion, allowing the engineers to change penalty killers. Taves down the middle for the Bobcats. Fed across, and now near side. Good move into the zone. Shot over the top by Smith. Bobcats have shot high a number of times here through the first half of this game. Poked out along the boards. Bradley trying to knock it away. As was Hampton. Played behind the cage. Tim Clifton around to the near wall. Annis waiting for it there. To the point. Taze with it. Across for Clifton. To the circle. Back to Connor Clifton. A shot. That one's blocked by Miller. And he clears it out. Great individual effort there by Mark Miller. Blocking it and then getting it out. Trying to catch the engineers in a change. They work it all the way up the ice, but it's too far for everybody. Kasdorf plays it around to the near wall. Out of the box is Schrader, but Landon Smith still in the attack. To the far side corner on the feed there for McMaster. Now back to the point. Plenty of space near side McKernan. Fed in front, broken up by the engineers, chopped down low. First one to it, Landon Smith, wrap it around to the far point. Just off the bench. Good touch pass inside, saved by Kasdorf. And after playing around the outside of the zone, finally a shot comes. But it's from distance from Alex Minor Barron, and Kasdorf sees it easily. There's so much that's been happening since the last RPI call, and I haven't had an opportunity to run it down yet. So, RPI's <laughs> second goal, an even strength goal at 155 of the second period, scored by Alex Rodriguez, his third goal of the season. The assist is going to Kenny Gillespie and Phil Hampton. Too much excitement for one, not even half a period. 12.32 to play in the second. 2-2 RPI and number one Quinnipiac here from the Houston Fieldhouse in Troy, New York. Engineer gets tossed from the dot. That means uh, Rodriguez has to take the face off. One by the Bobcats back to the point. Taze fed off of Fulton. Trickles behind the goal. Tommy Grant fed back to the far corner. Smart play. Lots of room over there for Fulton. Travis Fulton up the boards. On for Gillespie. Fulton got decked. Engineers get it into the zone. McKernan off the glass to his center. Glove down and played along. Broken up nicely by Fulton once more. Puck to the RPI zone. Fulton got his stick tied up with one of the skates of one of the Bobcats as he now dangles through center. Ran into one of the Bobcats. Janssen plays it on further for Gillespie into the zone. Centering pass in front. Rodriguez denied by Gartig. He didn't have a lot of time to swing that one in. And in the end, Gartig got his pad over. Now Fulton in front. Rodriguez a chance again. Loose in the slot. Picked up by Janssen. And they'll settle things down. Bobcats skated out to center. Looking to move it into the zone. Davidson gets hit by Gillespie. This fourth line continues to shine for the engineers. Babella cross ice feed onto the tape of Rodriguez. He couldn't control. Back out to center. Picked up by Milos Babella once more. He's shown plenty of energy in this game. Something you have to be happy with if you're an RPI fan. When he is on, he is very dangerous. Cross ice feed near side skips to Liljegren. He takes a bump from behind from Janssen. They duel in front of the RPI bench. Martin over to help out for the Bobcats. 11-19 to go second period, 2-2 game. Mears Moore will cross center and shoot it in. In on Garty, who taps it to the corner. Milos Babella, the first one there. On for Liljegren. Behind the goal. Babella trying to jump on it. Leaves it for Liljegren, now gives it back to him. Liljegren, cross ice feed to the point. Wilson fakes a shot, takes a shot, and skips wide. To the near side half wall. Victor Liljegren turning away from Cutter Clifton. He'll drive the net right out in front. And it was sticked away at the last moment. Now carried back the other way by the Bobcats. Center ice, Janssen. Stick handles around Pravavasis into the zone. Takes a hit from Navito. Separated from the puck. Picked up by Victor Liljegren. Liljegren in front of his own net. On for Jimmy Navito. Into the zone comes Devito. A little bit of a stick lift from St. Dennis, wrapped around to the far side, and out of the zone comes Landon Smith. Stops at center, fed on further. Peeper into the zone to the slot, a shot saved by Kasdorf, and the rebound is swept away by Grant. Puck out to center, picked up there by Taze. Tangling was Wood and one of the Quinnipiac defensemen. Tie up at center. Orval jumps on it there. Skipped off the boards. Here comes Wood. Pride right out to center. Grant trying to poke it up the wall. Pops in the air on St. Dennis. Into the zone. Onside on the Bobcats. Shot by Taze. Rung wide. It hits off the back wall. Orval with some time in his own zone near side. Fed cross ice for Bradley. Down the middle for Miller who tips it into the zone. 
Stopped at the line. We get a whistle here and a hand pass called. Face-off coming in the Quinnipiac zone. We are almost exactly halfway through this one in a 2-2 game. RPI women have taken the lead. Second goal tonight by Shana Tomlinson has the engineers up 2-1 after two periods of play. The assists on Tomlinson's second goal to Amanda Kimberly and Lauren Walsh. If the engineers can hold on for the next 20 minutes, they will be off to the playoffs. Great news from Princeton, New Jersey, Tom. We have a 2-2 game here, face off in the Quinnipiac zone. Nanny back to the point. Hampton near point. He'll wrist it well wide off the glass behind the goal. Too far for Schrader. Nanny lets it run. Schrader picks it up in the far corner. Schrader spinning away from his man. That was Taze. Right to the net. Good poke check there. Played behind the cage by Taze. On a four. Minor Baron. Out in front. They score! Nifty little backhander by Zach Schrader. Just hops that one over Gartig's stick into the back of the cage. And RPI has come all the way back. They trailed 2-0 about 20 minutes ago. Now at home against the number one team in the country, they've taken a 3-2 lead. Spectacular there from the engineers. They continue to do great work in the offensive zone. Nanny and Schrader celebrate. Garty, a couple times, has been left out to dry. He's made a couple of spectacular saves, but he couldn't stop that one. Goal number four on the season for Schrader. He picks up his 18th point, or 19th point, rather. There's a puck trickling into the zone. Make it 18. Anyway, Smith shoots it in. Prapovess is behind the cage, around for Bubella. Gave it away in front to Annis. That's a, nearly a big mistake, but it's poked off his stick and chipped up the boards. Race for the puck. Lilger going to get there first. Lilgren at the boards, back to the point. Grant, wrist shot coming. That one skips wide of the goal. Picked up by Smith. Moving up the far wall. Here come the Bobcats into the zone. Toe drag to Werner. Turning, fan on the shot, takes a hit from Bradley. You can hear the fans looing for Lou Nanny on the assists. That's given RPI the lead here. 8.45 to play in the second period. Cross ice feed, Clifton connects just into the zone. Connor Clifton right on goal. Kasdorf with a blocker stop to the corner. Now in front, a shot. Kick saved by Kasdorf as that shot handcuffed Davidson just a bit. Back out to center come the engineers. They get it in. Gillespie all by himself in the offensive zone. Big hit on Davidson who complains. Puck to the point. Shot coming more. That one's blocked by Connor Clifton. Davidson trying to clear. Swept along by Rodriguez. Is he having a game? Gillespie on further, and we get a whistle, and we get some uh, pushing and shoving as Rodriguez needs to be separated. Now he's wrapped up by Davidson, and we will uh, take a break. Scoring on RPI's third goal, even strength goal at 10-21 of the second period. Zach Schrader, his fourth goal of the season. The assists going to his wings, Riley Borbonese and Lou Nanny. There's a scoring summary for the folks watching on RPI TV. We have penalties coming up here. I believe one each way for some away from the ice uh, shenanigans. There is an engineer in the penalty box. There is a Bobcat in the penalty box. Which ones they are? Tim Clifton is the Hard Bobcat. Kenny Gillespie, the engineer. They were getting into it in the corner away from the puck, and they referees just stopped by and said, uh, that's enough. Yeah, the way this, not the way a, this not period, bad, uh, the way this period is played out, that's probably smart. I mean, it has been noted that the ECAC has seen a noticeable decline in penalties in the last month and a half or so, but the way this game is being played, and not just because it's being played physical, it's because it's being played extremely physically. You have to, you have to make calls like that in order to keep things from getting out of hand. Referees have done a solid job thus far in doing that. We expected uh, more things to come after it was hinted on in that first period. Lots of physical play. Coach Appert uh, was a slash in Gillespie. Both. Good sign language from Tom. St. Dennis into the RPI zone. Lost it for a second. Prapoves is trying to swat it out to center and does. We're four on four here for a minute 45. Jumping on the play. Fulton pokes it into the zone. And has Rodriguez with him. To the corner. Fulton the first one to it. Spark plug for this RPI team and a senior all the way in front. Wrap around try. That would have been spectacular from Fulton. He wrapped all the way around the net and nearly stuck it home. He missed wide by about a half a foot of that far post. Now back comes St. Dennis into the RPI zone. Prepovess is trying to stay with him. Went down. Picked up along the far boards by Smith. 
Prisky a drive off the base of the net. Kasdorf might have gotten a piece of that one. Help behind the goal by Wilson. Minute and 14 or so left to go with a four on four time. Nanny has to avoid a hit there from Connor Clifton as McMaster picks it up for the Bobcats. Moving into the zone, far side, shot coming, saved by Kasdorf, no rebound. It was a shot from the far circle by Chase Prisking. You can see why he has so many points so quick into the offensive end. That time he was denied. Boy, this four on four is just a lot of fun. You got two strong goaltenders, you got two teams with a lot of speed. Quinnipiac at least is well versed at scoring. The engineers this period seem to be dangerous every time they have the puck down in the Quinnipiac end, so that is a good recipe for some fun hockey at four on four. Face off in the RPI zone, shot coming loose at the side of the cage. Tommy Grant pinned uh, his man to the side of the net. Uh, that was Tiffenworth. Now a centering pass out in front off the pipe, and now the Engineers will skate it out to center, two on two. Grant lost his stick back in the defensive zone. Puck ahead for Miller. Miller in the corner. Nice job to keep his balance. Took a stick up high and lost his. And now it'll be carried out to center by McKernan. Miller is replaced by Orval, who has a stick. Puck played to the far corner of the RPI zone. Bradley behind to the near side corner. Tommy Grant will jump on it there. The freshman, Tommy Grant from Sparta, New Jersey, plays it up the boards for Riley Bourbonnet. Borbonet in the corner, drop pass Orval, shot coming, save on the pad by Gartig. Prabavesis in front, Orval coming, shot save again by Gartig, point blank. Back to Prabavesis again, lost it on the stick handle, a chance to break three on one. And Prabavesis laying out to potentially break up a play, still a chance in front. Shot coming, save, Kasdorf, rebound cleared to the corner where Prisky was dumped. We're back to five on five. Stick handle in the center is Gillespie. Kenny Gillespie in the zone. Wrist shot coming in a save by Gartig. A shot from the far wall broken up. Gloved down at the line by Hampton. Poked out to center and we need a whistle. We'll get one. We got a penalty I believe coming up here on Quinnipiac. It's gonna be a rough 5.56 to go in the second. Three, two engineers and they're going back on the power play. Well this has been one not to miss. This whole period's been a lot of fun back and forth. Engineers have two goals. That four-on-four four was really incredible. Both teams with some tremendous opportunities to score. Chase Prisky really should have scored uh, late in that four-on-four, four, but he just waited too long for the engineers' defense to, to come down and help out their netminder. He was all alone with the puck. Maybe a freshman defenseman uh, not really well versed in what to do with the puck that far down low with that much ice space. But now Prisky off on a roughing call, so the engineer power play back to work here. Leave it there. One, or they're technically 0 for three, if I if I understand my math correctly. I'm seeing one for two, but they had a five on three that they didn't score on. So we're going to call this an RPI power play, regardless. They do have one goal tonight that was kind of recreated by a power play, however. Offensive zone faceoff win. The pass back to the point though eludes Prapovesis, and the engineers will head back to their own end. Mike Prapovesis. Fed far side for Mears Moore. He'll shoot it in. Wrapped around to the near side corner. Babella trying to jump on it. It hopped off the dasher, played around to the near side. No one knows where the puck is. First one to realize where it is is Janssen, and he shoots it all the way down the ice. In on goal, Kasdorf will play it there. Minute 25 on the RPI power play as they'll start things out from their own end. 3-2, engineers lead. They shoot it in. RPI currently 0 for 3 on the power play as it'll be Hampton to pick up the puck behind his own goal once more after Quinnipiac clears. RPI's first goal came directly after a power play had ended as it's flipped into the zone. Orval trying to chase it down. Smith to the far corner. Orval behind. He'll jump on it in the near corner. Trying to wing it back to the point. And he'll get a second try. He does get it to Hampton. Shot coming. Hampton. Rebound pops in front. And the Bobcats clear again. 48 ticks left on the power play. 440 left in the second period which has seen the engineers come back from a 2-0 deficit to lead 3-2. Against the number one team in the country, Quinnipiac. Just two losses total on the season for the Bobcats as the engineers get it deep. Wood, it's played by Gartig to the far corner. Picked up there, and it's cleared all the way down. Good stick by Tommy Shutt out of Chanhassen, Minnesota, former Lincoln Star. A number of engineers were Lincoln Stars as well. Prapavesis. Near side for Schrader. He'll ring it in with 11 seconds to go on the power play. That one skips by Gartig. There's DeVito, one of the other Lincoln Stars for the engineers. You get a touch on it behind the goal. Wood, another Lincoln Star, back to the point. Bradley fakes the shot. He'll move down low into the circle. 
Turns back towards the point, hands it off for DeVito. Still out of the box now is Prisky. Power play over, Engineer still in the attack. Shot by Bradley at the edge of his crease is Gartig. He does not allow a rebound. That's a good balance there between a, some better play on the power play than we've seen for much of this season from the Engineers. And I, I would say a little bit of a better showing on the penalty kill for Quinnipiac as well. Now, it's not really fair to count the last penalty kill for them because they were down five on three. That's going to be a taxing on anybody's penalty killing efforts, but they did manage to get out of that one, and they get out of this one as well. RPI's power play 0 for 4, but not for lack of trying tonight. Face off one back behind to the near side corner. Clifton high off the glass to center ice. It'll come bounding down, played by Landon Smith. Tap back out to center. Annis, drop pass. With speed into the zone comes Clifton. Still on the puck to the far corner. Looking to center. Tight angle shot saved by Kasdorf. Rebound played to the far circle. Rodriguez wants to break. Skips over his head. He'll pick it up on the other side right in front of his bench and shoot it in. Gartig can't slow this one down. Picked up in the corner by Liljegren. Absorbs a hit from Prisky. Victor Liljegren in the corner. Spins away from Prisky. Prisky goes down. Liljegren still on it. Prisky comes back to knock Liljegren down. It's a heavyweight bout going on in the corner. And now it's taken out of there by Gillespie. At the half boards, Gillespie. He'll drive the net. Shot coming. Rebound put wide on the try by Miller. Prisky turning and shooting off the glass to alleviate the pressure. Gets it on for Landon Smith. To the wall for Annis. Annis takes a hit from Wilson. Fed back to the top of the circle, off the crossbar, and into the netting. It was a knuckle puck that came off the stick of Schutt. As uh, Schutt, uh, that puck never sat for him, and it kind of confused Kasdorf on its way through. Just hit the top of the crossbar and went over the net. Well, that wasn't the first shot that looks that uh, Jason Kasdorf has looked a little bit confused on. And that's because Quinnipiac loves shooting high. And they also love shooting high when they can also get a rebound or, or, or some kind of deflection. So the puck's bouncing in front of Jason Kazarov tonight. He hasn't always looked super strong, but he's done pretty well tonight. He does have 14 saves. Tie up in the far corner. Mears Moore has his man pinned against the wall. They shimmy on over to the Zamboni door. Played back to the point. Nearly stolen away by Nanny, but the Bobcats keep it in. Taverner, cross ice feed, trying to fit it through one too many sticks. It was broken up. Shot from the near point goes wide and high. Tap behind the cage. Tiffenworth, centering pass to the side of the net. Uh, engineers were all over that one. Skated out to center by Fulton. Takes a couple pokes at it, given away. Nanny into the zone. Lou Nanny to the circle, shot coming high and wide. It'll carry him all the way to the near point where it's kept in by Tommy Grant. Filtering down low, Jesper Orval. He's met there by Minor Baron. Good cycle on for Fulton. Fulton kicks it to his stick. Fed back to the point. Bouncing puck will be settled there and fed near side for Grant. Grant had a little bit of trouble, but works it up the wall on further. Fulton gets knocked down. Borbonate coming to help out there. 148 to go, second period. 3-2 engineers. We get a stoppage in play. Yeah, just fighting for it along that near board just a little bit too long, but the engineers will take the opportunity to have another face off in the attacking zone. With 146 remaining in the second period, RPI sitting on a 3-2 lead. For the third game this season, they have a lead against the top team in the country. They were able to complete the upset back in October here against Boston College, but last time they played Quinnipiac, they were unable to hold on to that lead. Engineers shoot it in off the neutralized draw. Played by McKernan. He's hooked. Penalty coming up on Rodriguez. A little over-aggressive play will turn into a power play if the engineers can get a touch. Gartig waiting for the puck to come out of his own zone as Rodriguez lays into one of the Bobcats at the side of the net. And uh, certainly got his money worth there, although he will go off for a hooking call and really the first bad penalty you could say the engineers have taken in this game. Yeah, it's a bad penalty, but it, uh, this isn't a penalty that would have been called last weekend or, or any time in the last month. In a game like this, the way the penalties have been being called because of the physical play, it's not something that you can do, especially in the attacking zone when you don't have the puck. It's, it's not a good penalty for, for Alex Rodriguez to take. He's going to be off for two minutes with... 1.30 remaining in the second period, so the engineers are going to be hoping to bleed this one over into the third. Exactly right. 3-2 RPI power play for the Bobcats is their second. Good clean win in the defensive zone for the engineers, and Prap of Essos will shoot it all the way down. Stopped by Garting, who will leave it off for Devin Tays. Six goals, 18 assists coming into tonight. 24 points for Tays. He has 61 career points as a junior blue liner. Sam Annis in the far corner. Fed to Tim Clifton, takes a couple swipes at it. Bradley tried to steal it away, off a glove, and this one will get to center ice, forcing the Bobcats to regather there. Tays hands it off and gets it back from St. Dennis. 
Into the zone come the Bobcats. To the far corner, Annis and Bradley Tangle. Knocked down by Prabavessis, cleared out to center. They just got it by Tays, or a make it minor Baron rather, who will now turn right back up ice. I was right the first time, Tays into the zone. Far side for Clifton, back to Tays, 36 seconds to go in the period. St. Dennis, center blue line, comes to a standstill. Hands it off there for Tays, to the near side circle. Clifton, that's Tim, up top for Tays. To the far side circle, St. Dennis in front, tipped on goal, rebound, save, Kasdorf, rebound again to the near side half wall. Babella trying to clear, he's tied up to the far side point, glove saved by Kasdorf. And he denied St. Dennis from the blue line there. Fans on their feet at the Houston Fieldhouse. From my angle, it looked like that shot might have been going wide, but it's one of those shots, especially when you're when you're killing a penalty that you're not going to let get by you. You're going to want to stop that one down, especially as time is ticking by here in the second period. There's still 43 seconds left on the penalty to Rodriguez, but realistically, if you're Jason Kasdor, if there's 13.2 seconds left, you got to get yourself out of this period and get it into the third with this uh, with this power or this penalty kill basically still intact. 43 seconds remain on the power play, the hook and call on Rodriguez. 13.2 on the clock and a big, big 13.2 for the psyche of uh, really both these teams as Seth Appert calls a couple of engineers over. Is there a timeout being called here or are they just uh, waiting for something? I, I would have to think that it, by, the, by this point by they this would point. have to call a timeout. Right. It's, engineers, they, they haven't announced a timeout, but they're, are they, the referee's in the penalty bench, so it looks like they're going to be reviewing something. Possibly. Is there something to look at? I I'm guess not there is. Sure. The, the review up here is getting set up, so I guess okay. they are reviewing. So I didn't see anything that would be no. close to being a goal, so I'm not sure what they're looking at, but. It's a good question. We'll be able to peer momentarily and see exactly what they're taking a look now, at. It's Opportunity for the yeah. FBI uh, uh, penalty killers at least to take a, a, a deep breath, if nothing else. If a team has a timeout, this is new, I believe, last year, but only being implemented where possible. Uh, coaches' challenges are a possibility if you have a, uh, a timeout left. And so they're probably looking for something where a puck may have come close to crossing a line. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but uh, is, uh, I couldn't tell you what no. they're looking at right now. I couldn't even begin to tell you what they're looking at. Couldn't quite tell you, but uh, I'm not sure if this was initiated by the Quinnipiac bench. We'll find all that out for you, uh, at least between periods, if not sooner. Um, Jason Kasdorf made a couple of pretty clear saves outside the net, and uh, whatever they are looking at, we Ooh. will, uh, like I said, we'll get to you to that. What's being shown right now on, on RPI TV is very clear, some very clear saves that, yeah, that, that were may not, not be what they're looking remotely at. close to the goal. So, yeah, it's uh, well, the referee's out. It, He's going back to the Quinnipiac bench, so I believe this may be a challenge. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, we'll square all that away when we get more better word of it. They're putting time on the clock, I guess, 15.3, which could be the... That that could well be what they were <laughs> looking at. It's entirely possible. So they put on about a second and a half back onto the clock. Maybe the clock ran a little bit longer. That's always a possibility. Clearing effort by the engineers might not make it to... Well, might make it a moot point as they clear off the defensive zone. Face off, eight seconds to go in the period. One more rush. If they hurry, Annis fed along. Played into the zone. Now stopped up at the blue line by Miller, and that will do it for the second period. And what a second period it was for the Engineers, who score three times and take a 3-2 lead into the third. Well, they scored twice. They scored me. twice in the uh, in the second period. They did, get, they did get one late in the first period. You're right. That was probably one of the best periods of hockey I've seen the Engineers play this season. They weren't. Uh, they weren't dominant because this is a very good team they're playing against. So it's tough to be dominant at all, but if, as, as dominant as they could be, they were in the second period. And RPI actually unlucky that they didn't get a couple of more goals in this second period. That that was the level of quality they had on power plays, on, on odd man rushes, just on good shots that they had to, uh, the opportunity to take. And it's a credit to, to Michael Gartig's play that this game isn't 4-2 or 5-2 at this point because he really had to come out of his pads for a couple of those saves. It's it's was just a tremendous period of hockey because Quinnipiac had plenty of opportunity to score in that period too. They had a, they've, they've got this late power play. They still still have it starting into the third period, but they've had opportunities. They had some great opportunities four on four. They had some good opportunities five on five. The RPI defense did a great job during that second period. 
there wasn't really anything I could point to on Quinn PX and that would lend me to believe that they were playing back or, or doing anything really wrong. It's just that RPI was just all over the puck. They were jumping on it. They were winning puck battles. Everything that you want a, a team to do in order to come back from a 2-0 deficit, the engineers have done. And they've brought themselves all the way back now. It's 3-2. Mentioned in the second er, in the first period that for RPI being down 2-0 that early, that was a good thing that it was that early. They had plenty of time to come back. Now there's still 20 minutes left in this game. So they might have come back. I don't want to say they came back too early. There's never such a thing as <laughs> coming not, back too early. Such thing. But this is a team that has sometimes struggled to complete games in the third period. Absolutely. But, you know, exactly, uh, this is the kind of game where you, you learn a lot about your club. They'd been, they were in this situation last time against Quinnipiac where they had even a two-goal lead, and uh, the Bobcats were able to come back uh, from that to uh, and this is a team for the PIAC that's kind of lived on the edge all year. They only have two losses, but there have been plenty of games where they've been down and they've fought their way back to tie or win games. And look, RPI, they're, they're gonna, if, if there's one thing they're going to kick themselves after the second period, they're going to wish they had that kind of insurance goal because, as you mentioned, this is a Quinnipiac team that can score whenever. I mean, it, it's a little bit like Harvard last, last Friday where in the third period, Harvard never really looked like they were going to score, but you knew that they could. Mm -hmm. I felt on Saturday night that it kind of looked like Dartmouth was always going to score at some point in that third period, and they did. Tonight, they were playing a Quinnipiac team that can score at will. They need to be on lockdown on defense. Just to point, just to make this very crystal clear, a couple weeks ago, Quinnipiac was at Dartmouth. They were trailing 5-2 to two <laughs> with 15 minutes left. They won that game 7-5 to five in, in regulation. So anything, anything can happen here when you're talking about Quinnipiac. Absolutely. We will step aside here momentarily. Be back with our second intermission here at the Houston Fieldhouse where the 17th ranked engineers lead number one Quinnipiac 3-2 after 40 minutes of play. You are listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy.
We welcome you back inside the Houston Fieldhouse here on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, as we get set to bring you the third period of action between the 17th ranked engineers of RPI and the number one Bobcats of Quinnipiac. My name is Tom Real. I'm joined here by Perilous Garris. You're listening to all this in your home for engineers hockey, 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. The score after the period of play is RPI 3, Quinnipiac 2. Before we get started with the third period, I'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union for providing funding for WRPI and all the related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. As a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web, once you browse at WRPI.org. And you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, as long as WRPI is broadcasting. We provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that's WRPI.org. Quick update for you from Princeton. The Princeton Tigers were able to tie the score up at 2-2 at 11.42 of the third period, but less than a minute later at 12.23, even strength goal by Alexa Bruchaw has the engineers back up 3-2. So with 7.37 remaining, actually, just a quick update, 5.02 remaining now in regulation. RPI is still holding on to a 3-2 lead, a win once more that would clinch for the engineers a playoff berth. Getting set for the third period here. Shots are 20 to 19 engineers. Face-offs 25-20 Bobcats. That's a good number if you're RPI. This is a very good team on the draw. Quinnipiac, the engineers are holding their own uh, in this one. We have uh, 
power play for another 30 seconds for Quinnipiac to start the period. It'll be RPI skating from right to left. Mark Miller on the draw against Travis St. Dennis, and we'll redo the draw. Sam Annis drops it back, played into the zone. St. Dennis will move it to the near point and stop there. Center blue line. Shot coming, Taze. Loose in the slot, a bouncing puck will be tracked down by Prabavesis, although he's taken out of the play. Kick towards the near corner. Schrader battling for it there to the side of the net. Annis trying to drop it back. Backhand shot. Loose in front, swatted away. It'll stay in the zone. Taze in the air. It took a deflection off of Schrader's stick. Bradley can't clear. Loose behind the cage. Swatted to the far corner. Race for the puck. Miller's going to get there. Gets run into by Annis. Played to the near side. St. Dennis a drive. Rebound poked wide. Annis around to the near side corner. Holding. Dropping back for St. Dennis. To the side of the net. Fed in front. Still loose in there. Turning. Shooting. Loose puck. Engineers trying to clear. And they finally do to the near wall. Landon Smith stick handling around Prapavesis. Pulls it back. Stolen away by Schrader. Schrader off the far wall. Engineers need a clear. And they're not going to get it. Yes, they will. Out to center by Rodriguez. Just a minute five into the third. Already some excitement at the wrong end of the ice for the Engineers. But they do kill off that uh, power play. Wilson behind his own goal. Takes it up ice. Fed cross ice. That hit a skate. Deflects back into RPI territory. Tommy Grant taking a look around. Has a man chasing. It's Taverner. But they work it up near side for Liljegren. Left there. Good play. Babella into the zone. Two on two with DeVito. Shot deflects to the far side. Played behind by Babella. On for Jimmy DeVito. Stopped up in some wet ice. The puck just sat there to the side of the net. And Garty lets it run in front. Not sure what he was doing there. Played to the far side for Babella. Kept in the zone by Grant, but he can't control. Back out to center, Prisky. He fans on a pass. Ice is still a little bit damp here. It's caused a couple of uh, misplays of the puck. One in the neutral zone, one in the Quinnipiac end. Now it's Wilson. Scooping it along into Bobcats territory. Played there by Derek Smith. Back out to center comes Quinnipiac. On further, McMaster into the zone. Far side played around Peeper to the far corner. It's Hampton stolen away. McMaster had it knocked off his stick by Hampton. Side of the net, back to the point. Shot by Smith, save Kasdorf. Another stop by Stack Kasdorf on the pad, and he'll hold on. He denied Craig Martin on the doorstep with a couple of left pad saves. They were pretty. It's still 3 2. Sometimes you just. You stop being impressed, I guess. I don't know. It's, <laughs> you can keep being impressed. You can, but it, it, you keep seeing solid saves by Jason Kasdorf on a night in and night out basis. And it, I, don't know, I guess it starts to become a little bit old hat, but, but two really big time saves there for Jason Kasdorf, who had to move basically from his rear end in order to move himself into position for that second shot. Played to the center of the ice and does giveaway there in front. Kasdorf does the right move. He sticks it up into the netting. After it was uh, Janssen that got free on a loose puck, uh, which was given to him in the slot, Kasdorf sticked it away. Princeton women have scored with 3.01 left in regulation, so that game down in Princeton between RPI and the Tigers now tied at three. Excitement there, excitement here. Behind the net, poked on by Bradley to the corner. Smartly used his stick and not his glove when he was on his stomach there. On for Wood, into the zone, drop off Miller. Fed in by Tommy Grant. Now a centering pass. All bottled up there was Miller. And it's skated back out to center by Taze. He'll move it to the line before dumping in and going off on a change. Bradley there, a little bit of pressure from Annis. Off the near side boards, out to center. Connor Clifton flips it back in. But a couple of Bobcats were offside. They now need to touch up and do. Bradley cut off there as they swarm him. The engineers do break to center ice, however. Here's Riley Bourbonnet into the zone. Just uh, even there with Schrader. All the way around the net goes Bourbonnet. Poked away for a second. Bourbonnet goes down as he lost an edge. Flipped into the zone. Schrader needs to touch up and does. Prisky picks up the puck in the far corner of his own zone. Chase Prisky now near side. Used the net as a screen to get away from Schrader. Shoots the puck near side for Landon Smith. Far side feed, Annis, shot coming, saved by Kasdorf on the stick. Played around to the far corner, Schrader. Behind the net, 
Gave it away. St. Dennis in front. Shot coming off the base of the cage. That came off the stick of Landon Smith. This top line oh so dangerous. They can jump on a giveaway just like that as uh, Smith took that shot. Now a wraparound try. Poked away by Wilson. He shoves his man to the far side of the net. Saved by Kasdorf and the net comes off. Engineers are not going to be allowed to change. But they'll take the... Uh, They'll take result the there, yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. And you're absolutely right about this top line, this this line of of, uh, of Annis and uh, St. Dennis and, and Smith. Anytime they're out there, they're they're dangerous and and they're potentially scoring goals. And it's just the reasons that you were talking about. They can pounce on rebounds and, and try and, and put them home, and they're able to really connect real well on some long passes across the zone. Draw here, far side of the RPI zone. Puck's been in this end of the ice for much of this third period, although we're only four minutes in. Behind the net, shut to the far corner. He's watched by Schrader. Schrader puts him into the wall. On further for Tiffenworth. Now Wilson has him against the boards. Good cycling as it's Taverner to the corner. As an engineer went down, played back to the point, nobody home. And Derek Smith will go back to his own zone to pick it up, the junior out of Apple, ba Apple Valley, Minnesota. He'll stop things up there. Engineers make a partial change. And now the breakout comes from Quinnipiac. Good poke check. DeVito picks it up, kicks it into the offensive zone. Although McKernan's going to be the first one to it. Sophomore out of Millbury, Massachusetts to play for the Bobcats. He's bumped off the puck by Babella. Liljegren around behind. DeVito looks to work the puck away from Smith. And it's chipped to the near side wall. Mearsmore pinching in. Puck chipped to center ice. Hampton all by himself in his own end. Does a nice job to get it away from Taverner. And now on, dumped in by Moore, who gets tackled in front of the RPI bench. And we're going to get a whistle here. What was he doing there? There's a Quinnipiac player that just up and tackled Mears Moore. You can see it if you're watching RPI TV. It was Tiffenworth. He wrapped him up and took him down. Yeah, that's that's two points <laughs> in wrestling. Yeah. yeah I, that's, what are you doing, Tiffany, Tiffenworth? They're sending him. They're sending both of them off in the box. I'm not entirely sure what Mears Moore did there, unless he was scuffling with him on the ice. But mm. we're going to get, a, I think, a four-on-four four out of this. And if this is anything like the last four-on-four, four, you can strap in right now because it's <laughs> boy, that was a lot of fun. So both teams had some good opportunities last time they played four-on-four. Will be four. Will be four is Great, yeah. uh, the referee Kevin Gruber is mentioning four-on-four. Four, so Mears Moore is off for the Engineers. And K.J. Tiefenworth, formerly of the University of Massachusetts, now a junior at Quinnipiac, is off for the Bobcats. And the four-on-four -four power play begins in the Quinnipiac end. Draw here. Puck moves behind the Quinnipiac goal. Around to the far corner. Landon Smith will pick it up there and looks to break out. Three on three to the RPI line. Played far side. They're offside, and the touch of the puck will draw a whistle. 14.47 to go, third period. It's the 17th ranked Engineers, three, and the number one Quinnipiac Bobcats, two. Well, the Engineers are through the first quarter of the third period with still maintaining that three to two lead that they've got. They need to keep the physical pressure up a little bit. I think they've, they've kind of let off just a little bit since the end of the second period. They can really use for some more physical play. Got the right group out there to do so, Rodriguez. And not so much Fulton, but he's been the, a catalyst of sorts in this one. They shoot it deep. They wave off the icing as Rodriguez is the first one down the ice, making Gartig play it. Hampton, or excuse me, Fulton tries to jump on it far side. He's all by himself below the goal line. Four Bobcats with him, and they take the puck away. Chase Prisky feeds it near side, tapped out to center ice. On further, McMaster lost it for a second. He gets it back from Landon Smith. Shot comes, save, Kasdorf, rebound flipped to the far side circle. Rodriguez is going to jump on it there. Great poke jack to work it free, or the engineers may have been out two on one. Played along the far wall, now Grant shoves his man against the boards. Puck comes loose to the circle, shot blocked, played back to the point. Some room for Connor Clifton. Fakes the shot, takes a shot off the back of the net. Tommy Grant continues with McMaster in front, and they're going to get Grant here, who he throws his hands up in the air. That is to say... What about him, but not this time? Interference is going to be the call against Grant. It's a, it's a good call. And the puck was shot behind the net and basically put his man down on the ice rather than allow him to chase after it or go after it himself. So we're going to see a four on three power play here for the next 57 seconds to be followed by five on four, pending other penalties, I suppose. But 
Quinnipiac's dangerous power play back to the power play. Draw here, move it back up top for Taze. Taze with it, center blue line shot coming, blocker stopped by Kasdorf. Annis, back to Taze. Near side, St. Dennis, top of the circle, pulls it back towards the blue line. Shot comes, save made, rebound again, saved by Kasdorf! He kept it out again, he denied Tim Clifton. He's, a, he's hard to beat right on the doorstep. If you're, if you're going to get one past Jason Kasdorf, you've either got to be able to get that one lifted, which even then it's not even that easy since he's able to shut down a lot of the cage even from on his stomach. But you gotta, if you're going to beat Jason Kasdorf like that, you've got to be able to shuttle it to somewhere where he's not. Offensive zone draw win for the Bobcats. Fed back to the center blue line. Good poke check by Miller. Can't clear. St. Dennis. Over to Taze, wrist shot coming, high over the top. Karam's off the glass, Krapoves is trying to jump on it. First one to it, Annis, back up top for Taze. Far side Annis, a drive, blocked by Krapoves. And it's in his equipment, and they get a whistle. 15 seconds left of four on three power play time. And the engineer is getting in front of shots, and then Kazi makes another save. It's already three block shots on this four on three opportunity. It's, the engineer's showing off exactly why they lead the nation in block shots, they're willing to give up to keep it even from getting close to their top level netminder. Produces good defense all around. Power play continues. Four on three for now. St. Dennis top of the circle. Up top Taze. Far side one timer. Save Kasdorf. Rebound. They put it home. It's Tim Clifton and we're tied at three. Clifton did a great job of getting in front of Kasdorf, making him a little bit unsure. Clifton's got that relatively big frame. He's 6'1", 190. So he just kind of stood there right in front of Kasdorf when the puck came free. Clifton did a nice move to do exactly what I just said. He's got to get the puck where Kasdorf isn't. With Kasdorf relatively in the splits, he pushed it off to his left, put it into the net, and on the power play, the Quinnipiac Bobcats have tied it up 3-3. We knew it wasn't going to be easy for RPI, but we've got a whole new ball game here in Troy. Four on four for three, two, and one. Back to five on five and an even game with 12.54 to go. Into the zone, Hampton, wrist shot to flex wide. Near side corner, Orval. Back to the near point, Wilson. Tipped on goal and it goes just wide. Miller with a great redirection, just missed the net on the far side. Tie up along the boards in the corner. Quinnipiac zone. It's a 3-3 game. The goal for Tim Clifton is his 15th of the year. Long stretch pass into the zone, and they're offside, and we get a whistle. Face off all the way back in Bobcats territory. Scoring on Quinnipiac's third goal of the evening, a power play goal at 6.58 of the third period, Tim Clifton. Scoring his 15th goal of the season from Sam Annis and Devin Tays. So we are all knotted at three. Had to know it wasn't going to be easy for the engineers, and when you give the Quinnipiac power play even a few opportunities, that was just their third chance of the game, and they, they were able to convert on it. You are listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy, Perry Lascaris, and Tom Reel from the Houston Fieldhouse. It's number 17 versus number one here, and we have a 3-3 game. Puck out to center, played there by Tommy Grant, who shoots it right back into Quinnipiac territory. Bobcats from behind their own goal. It's Alex Minor Barron firing it near side to the RPI line. Davidson, that's Scott Davidson, fed in front, chipped up high in the air. It'll come down in the near corner. Grant fed off the boards near side right to Davidson. He takes a tight angle wrist shot. It'll carry him all the way towards the far point where Gillespie has his man wrapped up. That's Janssen. Bobcats keep it in the zone, however. Clifton runs into Fulton. Played back to the point neatly. Pristy a shot. That one's blocked by Prapavesis. Engineers can skate. It's Fulton. Has Gillespie with him. Fulton into the zone. Pulls it back. Lost it for a second. Finds Prapavesis streaking to the net, but he can't control the pass. Prapavesis just slaps it down low. Off the wall for Janssen. Hits his skate out to center. McMaster has it stolen away by Liljegren. Engineers' power forwards are playing well tonight. Liljegren, Gillespie, Babella. All playing with good energy in this game. Around to the near side corner, it's Prisky. Skips around behind. Played up the far side by McKernan. Into the zone come the Bobcats. McMaster into the zone. Fed to the circle, stolen away. Having to avoid his own man was DeVito as uh, Liljegren went sliding in in front of him. He was able to clear to center ice. Engineers regather in their own zone. Jared Wilson tipped into the zone by DeVito. Turned right back around by Derek Smith. Smith 
up the boards for McMaster. Into the RPI zone, makes a move around Babella. Fed to the near side. In front, drop pass, loose. Clifton can't control. And now here comes DeVito out to center, trying to feed it on further for Hampton, who jumps into the play. It'll be Smith tapping it to the near wall. Connor Clifton, that hit the linesman's back. Shot coming more, and a save made by Gartig into the netting. Nifty play by Mears Moore to just jump on that puck, and he put a lot on it. Gartig had to be good with the stick there. Six years ago tonight, February 19th, 2010, was you, the last you time. You beat me to it, Tom. Was the last time the engineers <laughs> defeated the Quinnipiac Bobcats. It's been a very long time. They came within nine seconds last month of being able to do it, but they're certainly not giving up here down 3-3. Three, three. This could is still anyone's game. 11 straight. Either tied or won 6-0 and 5 of the Bobcats in the last 11 as the puck is kept in by Tommy Grant. But you're right, Tom, 2010. RPI actually swept Quinnipiac that year, winning both games during league play. St. Dennis a shot into the glove of Kasdorf, who covers it easily, and will have a stoppage. 10:09 to go third period. Shots are 31-21 Quinnipiac, but we have a tie game 3-3. It seems that as long as Jason Kasdorf can see the puck, as long as he's getting his first look, he's being able to put it down. As long as there's no rebound, it doesn't look like Quinnipiac's in danger of scoring, which is good news for the engineers. Tommy Grant wraps it around far side, kept in there by Prisky. Wrist shot coming. Big rebound pops out to the slot. Engineers clear to center, where Connor Clifton jumps on it there. Played up the boards and all the way down. They'll say it took a deflection, so no icing. Chris Bradley. Runs into some trouble in the far circle, gave it away. Flip down low, shot deflects high into the netting and we'll have a faceoff coming in the RPI zone. Final score from Princeton, the Engineers and the Tigers finish 3-3 after overtime. So RPI does pick up a point, but Cornell has defeated Dartmouth 1-0, which means that the Engineers will need a little bit of help probably tomorrow from Harvard, given that they are taking on number one, uh, the top-ranked team in the ECAC Quinnipiac tomorrow. Puck to center eyes, a chance to break three on two for the Engineers, Fulton into the zone. Fed uh, fe near side, shot by Rodriguez, and not a bad idea. Gartig might not be looking for a shot to, when he caught that puck, but he got a quick uh, release on it. Gartig did make the save, however. Well, Alex Rodriguez just looks dangerous tonight, so you might as well take a shot and see what happens. If you're not scoring, you're, you're setting something up. You had Travis Fulton ready to come on for that one, and much like with Jason Kasdorf on the other end, RPI has got to get Gartig to give up a rebound. Puck to the far point, kept in Prapavasis on the backhand. Gillespie in the corner, takes a hit from Tim Clifton. Hands it off there for Rodriguez. He's bottled up now by McKernan. Tim Clifton one hands it towards the wall, kept in there. Prapavasis holding, stick handling away from Clifton. To the circle, down low, walking right in front. Fulton, maybe one too many stick handles there as the puck is played now behind the goal. Rodriguez around behind for Fulton. This RPI fourth line looks like it wants to control play. Played around behind to the far side, pinching in Jared Wilson all the way to the goal line. He's roughed up there by Janssen. Over skating is Fulton, stolen away by Tim Clifton, who scoops it in the air. Not a lot on it, out to center at least, and now played again to the near side line. And now stick handling in and out of the zone was Gillespie forcing the offside whistle. Gillespie, I'm not sure he knew exactly what he wanted to do with that. His lines, his line mates were going off. He was about to go off when the puck kind of came to him. Borbine, he and Borbine not quite on the same page. The face off just outside of Quinnipiac zone with 8.49 left in the third period. RPI, the number one Quinnipiac, tied at three. Neutralized draw. Engineers win it. Lilligren has it poked away. Played by Moore. Mears Moore back across into the skates of Hampton. Controls it at his own blue line. Fed along off the stick of Babella into the zone. First one to it will be Peeper. Around near side, Bobcats look to break out. Given away, a big hit by DeVito, separates things for Liljegren, although it's stolen right back by the Bobcats to turn it back out to center. Carried into the zone. Offside there was DeVito, and are we gonna get a whistle? No. Probably could have gone either way. Either way, the engineers do dump it in, and we play on. Minor Baron, far side, flipped into the RPI zone. Tommy Grant behind his own cage. Works it near side. He'll skate with it instead of passing it on for Liljegren. Liljegren has to find it here as it's poked away from Grant, but he slides it deep into the offensive end. Prisky from behind his own goal, fed down the middle, tipped into the RPI zone, a race for the puck uh, from a standstill, and Bradley beats Landon Smith to it, but now they tussle in the far corner. Kicked at there, picked up by Annis. 
tie, uh, tight angle shot by Ennis from the bottom of the circle. Not a lot to shoot at there, but he made Kasdorf for scramble a bit. Puck behind the goal. Landon Smith on his backhand in the far circle. Turns towards the point. Near point, Clifton. Wrist shot coming high, and that one might have hit Bradley on the way through. Wouldn't be surprised. He's uh, second in the country in blocking shots. Some just find you. Loose puck at center. Played by Prisky. On for Landon Smith. There's a bobcat offside. Had to wait for him to touch up and does. That saucer pass, too much to handle for Ennis. Engineers shoot it off the glass and all the way down. We may have a whistle. No, they wave it off. No icing. Played around behind. Bourbonnet steals it away from Clifton. Great move by Babella to get loose, or Bourbonnet to get loose. So the centering pass broken up. And now a chance for the Bobcats to skate the other way, but Hannes can't control the puck. Flip back out to center. Played by Orvald and Miller. 6.55 to go in the third in a 3-3 game. Miller tied up along the boards. Out to center it goes, and it's carried there by Shutt. Has a man with him. Shot around on the backhand. Shot coming. Saved by Kasdorf. Loose to the side of the cage. Taverner there. Shot coming way over the top as that puck was on edge for the shooter, Tiffenworth. And we get a draw coming. It's probably fair at this point to call this a fast-moving third period. There's been lots of end-to-end -end action. Quinnipiac with the only goal of the period. That was the, as of now, the game-tying goal by Tim Clifton at 6.58 of the period. But ever since then, there's been a lot of back and forth. The, the, the physical play seems to have died down a little bit. Both teams looking for more for Furness, I think, right now. Shot from the point to flex to the near corner. Bobcats on the attack to the slot. Shot by shut. Hit the skate of Wilson. Kept in the zone. Far side by Smith. Taverner. Stolen away by Prapavesis, who spins away from Tiffenworth. Fed up the boards on for Orval. Shot near side, RPI end. A little bit of room to work for Jared Wilson. He'll cross center and shoot it in. Rings around behind the goal. Derek Smith there. Connects to shut. Fulton tried to steal it away, but it's uh, Taverner, far side for Derek Smith. He lobs it in the air to the RPI blue line. Engineers trying to clear, can't do so. Into the far side circle, drop pass, tase a drive, loose to the side of the cage. Taverner there, to the near side now. Back to the blue line, tase. Far side, Tim Clifton, Rister, stick saved by Kasdorf into the net. And we'll stop things here with 5.47 to go in regulation. This Quinnipiac team is just really good at getting guys to the net, whether it's just for straight up screens. I mean, you don't see a lot of teams doing this anymore where a guy is in front of the net and he's very obviously just there to screen the goaltender. He's not moving around much. He's not. He's, he's there to screen the goaltender and he's there to pick up trash. And they've been doing that to, to perfection. Even with the puck near the, near the blue line, you got two guys down low. Puck to the far wall. Shot comes from Taze. That one skips wide. Pinching in Minor Baron. His shot hit the man in front of him. That was Rodriguez. Rodriguez jumps on that loose puck and skates it to center. Alex Rodriguez on the move. He'll dump it in. Takes a hit there from Minor Baron. Played behind the goal. Taze takes a hit. Gillespie tried to work it back to the point. Kept in by Bradley. To the far side circle. Fed in front. Wells and Fulton had a man. The pass popped right back to him. Far side corner. Gillespie. He'll shoot it around. Fulton lets it run for Bradley. Far point now Grant. Rister coming. Easy stop for Gartier who was headed wide anyway, but he'll now hold on to one as he felt some pressure at his end. It's been back and forth here in the third. Yeah, it's another one of those ones that when the goal, it's going wide, but you stop play anyway just because the way RPI's attack was set up. They were cycling the puck well. They looked very fluid. They looked a lot like Quinnipiac did in the first period, moving the puck in the attacking zone. So a veteran netminder like Gartier is just going to stop play right there. To the slot, a shot by Nanny, glove saved by Gartee. That's got to be just straight reflex, because I'm not even certain that he saw that one immediately. And he got his glove up real quick and just snatched that one out of the air. It's going to take a good one to get one past either of these guys right now. Puck around to the near side corner. Good break up there. They'll work up the wall. Nanny trying to keep it out. Or in, rather. Now back comes Quinnipiac the other way. Landon Smith drop pass. Nobody home. Back comes Bourbonnet. Has a man trailing his Schrader. Sliding poke check made. Puck pops in the air to the corner. Schrader lost his stick in the process. Prisky will pick it up and carry it around far side. Annis flips it in the air on the backhand through center. All the way down it goes. Milos Babello, the first one to it for RPI. Indirect behind the goal. Prapavesis stretch pass to the red line for Nanny. Nanny on for Babella into the zone. Makes a move to his backhand. Babella shot goes wide as McKernan stayed on him. Back behind the goal it goes. Scooped again in the air by the Bobcats. It's been their uh, choice for getting out of their own zone. Their means for clearing the puck is just lobbing it out to the neutral zone. Poked on further. Bobcats trying to clear and do to center ice. Fed far side. Good connection as Martin moves it far uh, 
uh, Smith over there. And now uh, off the skate, engineers will skate it to center. Fabella fires in from his own red line. That will not be icing as Lundgren beat the play and nearly stuck it home. He caught everyone by surprise, including me, beating out the icing call and nearly slapping the puck into an open net, but Garty got in the way. Now again, Lundgren scores! <laughs> That's just hard work by the sophomore from Stockholm, Sweden. He missed an opportunity to put one, like you said, Perry, right basically in an open cage. That had a weird bounce. Garcia was going back to play, and it ends up bouncing to Lilligren. I don't think he was expecting it, because I think he ended up kind of clearing it into the corner rather than taking a shot at the open net. But he got some open ice, and like you said, Perry, would not be denied. He just powered that one. I thought that was going to take a rebound to get one past Michael Garcia, but it took some, some sheer stick to it and just a power shot right at the top of the crease by Victor Liljegren. Great shot. I don't know how Liljegren got that puck in the shelf of that net from where he was. He was so close to the goal, he put it right under the crossbar, and it's 4-3 Engineers. 3.24 left in this one. Bouncing puck into RPI territory. Slapped back to center by Grant. Doesn't have the legs for icing. I think it does. Just barely across the line. Icing on the Engineers. We have 3.15 to play. Back on top again, RPI at 4-3. Well, as of right now, they're, they're announcing it. They're announcing the goal, but it is Victor Lilligren scoring for the Engineers. That is his fourth goal of the season. Well, the assists going to uh, Jimmy DeVito and Milos Rubel, a time of that even strength goal, 16 16 of the third period. And we're going to see a timeout being called here, I believe, by the Bobcats. This isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. We saw just how dangerous Quinnipiac can be with the netminder pull. They pulled, I remember, they pulled Gartig relatively early uh, against the engineers last time out. Now, they did that with purpose because they were going on the power play, so they decided to make it a six on four. That gave the engineers the opportunity that they needed to seal things up, but they had uh, a, a cross ice pass or a cross ice shot basically by. Lou Nanny missed by inches, which would have ended it. A, an empty net shorthanded goal would have surely been it for the Bobcats. So with 3.15 left in this one, the Bobcats don't have the advantage of having the power play, at least not at the moment. And they're going to get themselves settled with the faceoff coming up in the RPI zone. See what they want to do here. And, oh my, Michael oh. Gartig is coming off the ice with 3.15 left. That tells you just how much, how much uh, Rand Pecknold has faith in his six-man unit. So buckle up for the last 3.15. We'll see just, just what happens here. Face off in the RPI zone. One back by the Bobcats. Here's Clifton. Around behind it goes to the far side. Annis towards the point, broken up for a second. Annis back on it, one-timer. That one blocked in the air and into the netting. And you might see some block shots in the final 303 for the engineers. Well, if they're gonna get out here with a victory, you're gonna have to see more than just the one that we just saw. And for RPI, take it one shift at a time at six on five. Be calm, cool, and collected. They know how it ended last time. They've got the home crowd behind them this time instead. Draw here to the right of Jason Kasdorf. RPI wins it. Bradley, can the engineers find that elusive empty net goal they couldn't get down in Hampton? Centering pass, clearing effort by Borbonino. Swatting at it, stays in the zone. Right back to Schrader, he clears. Gloved down by Connor Clifton. He'll feed it into the RPI zone. Played around behind. Kasdorf can't slow it down. Loose to the far wall. Ennis towards goal. Sticked away by Kasdorf. Chopped at by Nanny. That'll leave the ice into the RPI bench. And we get a stoppage. 2.38 left. They're not going to let RPI change after that clearance. They're going to say it's pretty much intentionally shoveled into their own net. So the net effect is icing. RPI's defensive stand has to stay out there. But they are through the first 45 seconds of this crunch time. This last 2.38 is going to feel like forever if you're an RPI fan. Unless they can find that magic empty netter. Lou Nanny was about a foot and a half from putting RPI up by two goals in Hampton before uh, the Bobcats are eventually able to tie it with nine seconds left. 
they can find one here. They can put things at rest. But as it stands, 4-3. Shot coming. That was blocked. Stab at the side of the net. Still loose. Where's the puck? It's cleared. Indirectly off the wall. It'll be wide of the goal. And it will be icing. For a second, that puck looked like it was behind Kasdorf, but the engineers swept it away. I would like to see that one again. I don't know where the puck went. It was behind him somewhere, and an engineer was in the crease, I believe, doing some clearance. It's a slow bleed on that clock. 2.24 left now. The faceoff back in the RPI zone. RPI again not able to change, but at least a little bit of a breather. Faceoff. As one of the... Bobcat skaters just uh, slipped a little bit. Scott Davidson, the freshman on the far side. Face off here, Connor Clifton and Riley Barbonet. And now we get a whistle. They're encroaching on the far side, so they'll uh, back them off and do it again. Shots are 37 24 Bobcats, but the engineers hold on to a one goal lead for now. With 2.20 to play now, fed towards goal. Janssen, centering pass, swatted to the corner. Back to the point it goes. Tays, Prisky, Rister, blocked by Nanny to the slot. Clifton to the point. Tays or Rister, they score. It's 4 4, a six on five goal for Tays. Devin Tays picks up his seventh of the year. Plenty of screens in front. Well, that's exactly what Quinnipiac wants to do. That's what they've been doing the whole game, is getting guys in front of the net. And I've, I've mentioned earlier in this period how they like to get guys in front when you've got six guys out there. If nothing else, it gives you the opportunity to get three guys in front of the net where they had two before. And looking at it, that's exactly what happened. Three Quinnipiac players in front of Jason Kasdorf. There's no possible way that he saw that. They were basically challenging RPI to make blocks. They, they made some blocks. <laughs> but not all, not all the clear, blocks. Clearly not, clearly not enough. It's eventually, the, the puck's... Not that big. It's, it's easy to get through sometimes. And three, boy, three guys in front of the net. That's that's just tough to overcome, especially when you got these big guys like Winnipeg got in there. That's exactly why Rand Pecknold does it. Three and a half minutes left. He pulls Michael Gartig, expecting his top line to be out there, being able to make the plays. They've been making them all game long, making good uh, good connections on their passes. They they held the zone well, and eventually they got their tying goal. I'm not sure what the delay is for here. Maybe it was uh, an equipment issue. Seth Appert up on top of the bench to beg that question. He's calling it, it looks like a hand pass is a signal from uh, Kevin Graber, one of our referees tonight. We still are waiting to drop the puck and we need players first. Faceoff will come in the RPI zone, and there's a penalty on the engineers, which I completely missed. Delay of game, maybe grasping the puck on the faceoff? That can be my only guess. Actually, completely missed it. So now, well, yeah, it happened on the ensuing faceoff. So yep. that's, that's got to be. You it. can't grasp. You cannot grasp the puck as a center with your. You can't touch the puck with your glove at all. That's what Milos must have done. I apologize, I missed it. Power play for. Essentially, the end of this one, if the engineers can try and send it to overtime, there was 2 one on the clock when the penalty happened. McMaster back up top, slap shot coming, save made by Kasdorf, rebound cleared off the defenseman Smith and all the way down. So now the engineers had a 4-3 lead, now it's 4-4, and they're penalty killing to try and send this one to OT. Chase Prisky into the RPI zone, stops at the point. Pressure comes from Schrader. He works it down low around to the far side. DeVito and Taverner go into it in the corner. Puck comes free to DeVito. Swats it all the way down the ice. Gartig will stop it there. Virtually no time between the penalty and game clock. So I'll tell you there's 114 left. And that's all you need to know. Taze. Drop pass at center, over skating St. Dennis. He'll go and pick it up at his own blue line. Near side neutral zone for Annis. Bobcats seemingly in no hurry to get into the zone. Minor Barron drops it back. Into the zone comes Annis. Near side, Tim Clifton. Fed towards goal. Kasdorf makes the save. No rebound. 53.1 seconds left. And we go from a situation where RPI was desperate to hang on to a lead. They weren't able to hang on to that. Now they're desperate to just to hang on to this tie for the remaining 53 seconds of this game of this uh, of this regulation. They're going to have to kill off this penalty to Milos Rubella in order to get this one to overtime. Face off in the RPI zone. 53.1 seconds left. Prisky. They're just announcing the goal now. As I mentioned, 
Uh, his seventh of the year. Wrist shot coming. Save Kasdorf. Bradley clear. No. Right onto the tape of St. Dennis. And he fired wide. Loose at the side of the cage. Back up top. Taze, far side, one-timer, that one goes wide again. Played to the near side wall, loose in the circle. Bradley trying to clear, Ennis keeps it alive. To Taze at the point, along the wall. St. Dennis carries it back to the point, 30 seconds to go in regulation. Wrist shot coming, glove down by Schrader, he can't clear. Prabhavesis jumps on it, make it Miller. Miller shorthanded, ran out of gas at the end and just pokes it deep. 19 to go, Bobcats from behind their own net. Taze, drop pass there. Here comes St. Dennis into the RPI's own far side. He'll feed it into the far corner. Played around behind for Connor Clifton. Far side, one-timer off the back of the net. Hampton to the corner with two, one. That will do it for regulation. Four, four, we're going to OT again. Well, this is high drama in Troy, New York tonight. You gotta give Quinnipiac a lot of credit for playing to their strengths. By pulling the netminder far earlier than anyone would have expected with a one goal deficit, but it's just because a lot of what we saw from that top line for the Bobcats. That is Annis, St. Dennis, and Landon Smith. All game long, when they've been out on the ice, they've really just been looked, they look deadly mostly because when they, when they control the zone, they're able to cycle the puck well, and they don't give up the puck very frequently. They kind of wait to make their moves. And they're very calm and collected out there. And when you've got six guys out there plus those guys, you're not only controlling the zone, you're also gumming up the works better. I can't really emphasize this enough because you don't see this very frequently. Three players screening Jason Kasdorf. The puck gets through everybody, them and Kasdorf. And a goal by uh, Devon Taze with 3-0 three remaining in regulation. Made this a 4-4 game and sends us to overtime for the second consecutive game for the Engineers. The second consecutive game between these two teams. It was Taze on the goal, his seventh of the year. There were certainly assists, although I don't see who those have been chalked up to just yet. So if I get those, I will certainly re relay them on later on. Yeah. But for all the time that it, that it seemingly took between Liljegren scoring a goal, and Quinnipiac getting themselves caught back up. A minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> there were also four or five uh, face-offs in between that, but it certainly seemed like RPI had a 4-3 lead a little bit longer than that. Yeah, well, we have uh, overtime again. This is the 10th overtime game for the Engineers, who are 2-1-6. and six. Their uh -oh, only loss coming last Saturday at Dartmouth. Quinnipiac has had similar success, I believe, in OT. He's trying to track it down. Overtime here, five on five in the college game, and right off the bat, it's trickling in on Gartig, who covers, and we'll have a face off in the Quinnipiac zone just five seconds into the extra session. Just before Liljegren scored, I, I, I had a thought go through my mind that this was a game that, that didn't deserve a loser. And then, and then Liljegren scored, and I, I kind of got away from that a little bit. <laughs> but uh, the, honestly, the way this has all played out, it's been, it's been a dramatic game, back and forth, some good hockey being played both sides. Both teams have now come back. It's... I, I still feel like it might be a game that doesn't deserve a loser. Well, here comes Quinnipiac and a potential three on two. Janssen into the zone to drive. He scores. Soren Janssen snuck it under the left pad of Jason Kasdorf. It's a 5 4 overtime win for Quinnipiac here. And that is one that you do not see Jason Kasdorf giving up very frequently. That was just a rip shot by Janssen. One of those ones where if you're an RPI fan, you kind of expect that he's going to make that save. He had lots of open ice, no one in front of him. Just kind of looked like it snuck between his glove and his pad. I'm going to show this again on RPI TV. It's yeah. Five hole. Five hole. Wow. Just one of those ones. Usually when you see Jason Kasdorf taking a shot. No, that was that was no. definitely done. That was on the glove side, yeah. I had to see it again. Oh boy. Just one of those ones you don't expect him to give up. I mean, it, when, you, when you've got Jason Kasdorf with nobody in front of him, you, you kind of expect that he's going to make a stop like that. And for RPI, this has got to be a, just a heart-rending loss. Like I said, a, a game that really I don't think either of these teams deserve to lose. Both of them play their hearts out tonight. 
Quinnipiac play to their strengths, and they ultimately end up winning it just 15 seconds into overtime on, well, let me just say I didn't expect it to end like that. I don't Absol think anybody would. Absolutely not, and the engineers <laughs> continue to play well. And Coach Appert talked about it pregame, Tom, but they're in every game. It doesn't matter who it's against or where it is. They have a chance to win seemingly every single game, and they're a couple times tonight put themselves in that position uh, to try and hold on. But Quinnipiac once again proves why they only have two losses this year. Absolutely spectacular. And again, in overtime, they pick up a win. Uh, just uh, a minute 15 into the extra frame. A 5-4 win for the Bobcats who extend their unbeaten streak over the Engineers to 12 games. This one, this one hurts a lot for RPI. I mean, given the scores that have happened around the country and, and around the ECAC, they were setting themselves up. They were less than four minutes away from getting themselves to a point where they were not just back in the pairwise conversation, but back in a, in a position where they would be in the tournament with a, with a big win over a big team. And I joked about this with a, with a, with a, a BU blogger a couple of months ago, especially after uh, when uh, Quinnipiac was still undefeated and they seemed to always find a way to win just as they did tonight. My, and my, my phrase was, you, you got to kill it with fire. You can't just, you can't sleep on these guys. You have to play all the way to the end and, and make sure you're keeping them out right all the way to the end. RPI wasn't able to do that. Obviously, uh, down in Hamden, they were nine seconds away from pulling out with a victory and Quinnipiac ties it up. They do pretty much the same thing here tonight, and they ended up getting it uh, right at the end there, 15 seconds into overtime. It's a big slap shot from, from Soren Janssen. And once again, we see why Quinnipiac is the number one team in, in, the, in the country, because they just simply bring it until the game is over. And they ended the game here exactly the way you might expect them to. Final shots were 42-25. Bobcats uh, face-offs in favor of Quinnipiac as well, 43-32. RPI 0 for 3 on the power play. Quinnipiac 1 out of 4. As we bring you the uh, scoring in this one, Tom will come up with his offensive and defensive engineers of the game. It was Quinnipiac that got the scoring started at 47 seconds of the first period. Travis St. Dennis with his 16th of the year from Chase Prisky and Alex Minor Barron. Then it was a 2 nothing Quinnipiac lead at 9-12 of the first. Kevin McKernan his second of the season from Landon Smith and Sam Annis. But RPI pulled one back at 17-17 of the third. A sh shot off the skate of Jimmy DeVito into the net from Jake Wood and Mike Prapavesis. That was DeVito's second of the year. Uh, made it 2-1. to one. Our RPI pulled even on Alex Rodriguez's third goal of the year from Kenny Gillespie and Phil Hampton at 155 of the second. And then the engineers tied it at 10-21 of the second period. Zach Schrader scoring what is still an unassisted goal. That may change. Power play goal for the Bobcats tied things up at 6.58 of the third. Tim Clifton from Sam Annis and Devin Taves. Engineers went on top 4-3 at 16.16 of the third. Victor Liljegren with his fourth from Jimmy DeVito and Milos Babella. Uh, but then Quinnipiac tied it at 4-4. Devin Taves scoring at 17.56. And the game-winning goal in overtime, 15 seconds of the OT. Soren Janssen from Tim Clifton. That is that 5 4 the final? Just a real gut punch. If you're an RPI fan, you kind of could smell it at one point, but you're right on the cusp and weren't able to get the job done tonight. And in the end, the loss is a loss. 5 4 a loss in overtime. Kind of the same as a 5 0 loss in blowout flat fashion when all is said and done. So the engineers fall for the fifth time in the last six games. They got three games left. They're going to need to turn it around starting tomorrow night against the Princeton Tigers. My offensive and defensive engineers of the game. I don't think there's any question on offense. Alex Rodriguez was just absolutely all over the ice tonight. He did a, a wonderful job. He had one goal, could have had two. Michael Gartig really in that second period kept Quinnipiac in this game by making some completely ridiculous saves that you just don't see from even a lot of top end goaltenders. Alex Rodriguez specifically was robbed uh, late in the, in the second period that could have put RPI up 4-2 to two and really made this a very different game in the third period. But you have to really tip your hat to not just to Michael Garty, but Alex Rodriguez for the third consecutive game, an o RPI offensive player of the game from that fourth line. And it's been all three of those players, Kenny Gillespie, Travis Fulton, and, and, uh, and, and Alex Rodriguez really just giving them 
giving the RPI engineers a chance to win all of these last three games. They've, they've been tremendous for the engineers, and they, they really came close to getting the job done tonight as well. Defensively for the engineers, a tip of the cap to Jared Wilson, whose play in the second period really set the tone defensively for RPI, blocking shots and just playing the body like he usually does, getting this RPI crowd going with some really big hits. Uh, when the engineers really needed them in, in the second period. Part of a dominating performance by RPI in that second period, or as dominating as you can be against the top team in the nation when they're not necessarily playing that poorly. So Alex Rodriguez and Jared Wilson, my engineers of the game. Before we leave tonight, we want to thank DJ Scooter back at the station. Thanks to DJ Scooter, you're able to listen to the last couple of hours of engineers hockey. Our next WRPI Sports Broadcast will be tomorrow night here from the Houston Fieldhouse as the RPI engineers take on the Princeton Tigers. Puck drop for that game, senior night here at Houston Fieldhouse, will be at 7 o'clock. So expect an on-air time of 6.45 for our duo of Kurt Stutt and Ed DeGarian. We also want to thank the Rensselaer Union before we leave. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. Just a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser at WRPI.org. And you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as WRPI is broadcasting and provide that broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that is WRPI.org. If there are any RPI students interested in making live calls of RPI athletic events, such as the one you just heard between RPI and Quinnipiac, there are opportunities this season to get on the air for RPI baseball. If you have interest or to find out more information, contact us at wrpi-sports at rpi.edu. So for Perryless Garris, my name is Tom Real. Final score here from, here from Houston Fieldhouse, a heartbreaker in overtime for the engineers as they fall 5-4 to four to the top-ranked Quinnipiac Bobcats. You've been listening to live coverage of Engineers Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.